Thank you. All right, we're going to begin. Good evening and welcome to the March 1st meeting of the Falmouth Conservation Commission. This meeting is being held virtually via Zoom video conference, also being broadcast channel 15, streamed online by FCTV. As this meeting is being recorded by Zoom and broadcast by FCTV, please be cognizant of what you say, how you say it, and what can be seen and heard in your background. I'd like to thank our staff for their continued support to this mission and their diligence assisting applicants. We are missing two commissioners tonight. However, we have a quorum. We're moving forward. Uh, just a reminder that for commenting, I'll call on each of you at the appropriate time. And all votes will be done by roll call. Even if you, <clears throat> when I call your name, please state your name for and your vote, even if you've made the motion or the second. To our public participants, at any time during this meeting, you may enter any comments or questions via the chat function. At the appropriate time, they will be read into the record. The link and further instructions are located on the agenda. Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022 regarding COVID-19 allows for full public participation. Therefore, if you'd like to be heard on a specific hearing, let us know via the chat function. Then at the appropriate time, I will call for public comment. When you are selected, you will be moved into the hearing as a participant. As such, you must have your video enabled, be succinct and respectful of others. Public comments will be limited to three minutes each. Regarding RDAs, under a request for determination of applicability, the applicant is asking the commission to determine if the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and or the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw apply to their proposed project. A negative determination is that the provisions of the act and or the bylaw do not apply Therefore, the project may proceed as proposed. However, a positive determination means that the provisions of the act and or the bylaw do in fact apply. Therefore, the project would require a notice of intent application. Therefore, as an applicant, you want to hear a negative determination. And for the benefit of anyone waiting for a particular hearing tonight, and so that you're not waiting unnecessarily. The following hearings are expected to be continued. 26 Loomis Lane and 151 T-Ticket Path. And we have a full agenda tonight, folks. So let's try to stay on point the best we can. First up, vote minutes, February 1, 2023. I'll move Anyone? to adopt the uh, minutes of February 1st as written uh, and including any possible changes made. Thank you. Second, O'Brien. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to accept the minutes as submitted for February 1st. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Third, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. Aye. aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted the minutes of February 1st. Next up, minutes of February 8th, 2023. We'll move to um, accept the minutes of February 8th, 2023 as written and with any potential changes made prior to the vote. Second, O'Brien. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to accept the minutes for February 8th as submitted. Betsy. I felt her aye. Courtney. Third aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Steve. Patton aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted the minutes of February 8th. Next Mr. Up, Chairman. Minutes. Yes, sir. If I didn't attend the meeting, it's my understanding I still should vote the minutes or should I have abstained? Abstain, Steve. So I abstain on the meeting I did not attend, which I believe is the eighth. Okay. If I could correct, if you would allow that, Mr. Chairman. 
Absolutely, thank you. All right, so uh, next up is the minutes for February 15th, and we'll, we'll have Steve down as, as abstaining. I'll move to accept the minutes of February 15th, 2023, uh, with any possible changes voted on prior to the adoption of that. Second, O'Brien. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept the minutes of February 15th as submitted. Betsy. Butthole Dry. Courtney. Bird Eye. Matthews Eye. Kevin. O'Brien Eye. All right. We have accepted the minutes of February 15th. So we've accepted all three submitted tonight. Thank you, Kristen. Next up is a request for a continuance under a notice of intent. Joseph G. and Jida M. Farah, trustees, Harborfront Realty Trust, 26 Lomas Lane, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to reconstruct and enlarge the garage reconstruct the existing patio in the same footprint and to install mitigation and restoration plantings. Jen or Alyssa? Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance until March 8th. So moved, so moved. Filter. Ben, second. Thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this until March 8th. Betsy. Well, I told her I. Courtney. Bird I. Matthews I. Kevin. O'Brien I. Steve. Ben I. As unanimous, we have continued this until March 8th. Next up, under continuance for notice of intent, Constance M. Ryan and Andrew Doyle, 151 T Ticket Path, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to extend the existing revetment, construct access stairs, and nourish the bank. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting <coughs> a, a continuance until June 7th. Bird, so move. Not until a second. Bear with me one second, thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this until June 7th. Betsy. I'd filter I. <clears throat> Courtney. Bird, I. Matthews, I. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have continued this until June 7th. A little down the road. All right. Next up are requests for determination of applicability. First up, Sean and Jane Brady, 218 County Road, North Falmouth, Mass. For permission to pump dry and fill an existing cesspool and to install a Title V sewage disposal system. Ms. Bergeron. Staff recommends a negative three under the state and a negative two under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. And second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Any questions or comments? All right, Betsy. Bud filter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. Pat and aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Gary McNaughton, 57 Seashell Lane, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to construct a first floor addition and a second floor addition. Ms. Bergeron? Yes, the applicant is requesting a continuance until March 8th. So moved. Vlad Felder. For a second. second. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this until March 8th. Betsy. I felt her eye. Courtney. Bird eye. Matthews eye. Kevin. O'Brien eye. Steve. Pat eye. It is unanimous. We have continued this until March 8th. That could be a tongue twister the next time 
Melissa has to yeah, say no. that. <laughs> All right, next up, Chappaquoit Associates between 20 and 26 Associates Road, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to repair an existing dock due to recent storm damage. Ms. Bergeron? Staff recommends a negative three under the state and a negative two under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. Glad filter second. All right. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Any comments or questions? All right. Betsy. Glad filter aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. Bad, aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Paul Michaels, 200 King Street, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to conduct invasive species ma maintenance and for after the fact permission for invasive species removal in an upgrade from a cesspool to a Title V sewage disposal system. Ms. Bergeron. Staff recommends a negative two under the state and bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed, and this project is solely located in an AE flood zone. Bird, so move. Glad Filter, second. All right. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Any questions or comments? All right. Betsy. Glad Filter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. Aye, aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Lee Dunn, 224 County Road, North Falmouth, Mass. For permission to upgrade an existing failed cesspool to a Title V innovative alternative septic system. Ms. Bergeron. Staff recommends a negative three under the state and a negative two under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. Glad Filter, second. All right. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Any questions or comments? Uh -huh. All right. Betsy. Glad Filter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kate. <clears throat> Excuse me, Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. Ben, aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Ellen G. Todd, 106 Ryder Road, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to construct an enclosed porch, balcony, and addition to pump fit, tump, yeah, tripped over that one, to pump dry, fill, and either abandon or remove an existing cesspool and to install a Title V sewage disposal system. There's Bergeron. Staff recommends a negative three under the state and a negative two under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. Ten second. All right. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Any questions or comments? All right. Betsy. Glad filter aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. And aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Deborah Merriam, 15 Oak Ridge Road, Falmouth, Mass. Full permission to reconstruct and enlarge the front landing and to install mitigation plantings. Ms. Bergeron? Staff recommends a negative three under the state and a negative two under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. Glad filter second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Any questions or comments? All right, Betsy. Glad filter aye. Courtney. Bird aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Steve. Aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Susan Moran, trustee. Moran Children's Trust, 402 Wild Harbor Road, North Falmouth, Mass. For permission to replace three galvanized piles with wooden piles on an existing dock. 
Ms. Bergeron. Staff recommends a negative three under the state and a negative two under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Birds move. O'Brien second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Any questions or comments? All right, Betsy. Bob Filter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Mount, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. And, uh, it is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you, Emma. Next up are requests for a hearing under notice of intent. All hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. As a reminder, public commenting is limited to three minutes. So I encourage you to stay within the purview of this board, which are the rules and regulations of the Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw and how they pertain to a particular application. The chair reserves the right to stop any commenting that is disparaging or inconsequential to the hearing. First up, J. David and H. Jane Preston, 50 Weatherglass Lane, East Falmouth, Mass, for permission to reconstruct the paved right of way within its legal limits, install drainage, relocate the existing shed, install a modular way, is that supposed to be wall, with fence, and install restoration plantings. Jim. Yes, Mr. Chairman, there is a fairly large project team and um, group associated with this project. So first off, Cape and Islands, am I um, promoting Doug or am I promoting Raul? Raise your hand, which one I'm promoting, please. See who I'm promoting, Raul. Okay, here we come. I am promoting Raul from Cape and Islands. I am promoting Attorney Lawler, who is representing the applicant. And I am representing Attorney Lawless, who is representing one of the abutters. There is, a, I believe, there is a settlement agreement on this, Mr. Chairman. So all the parties um, want to be involved with this. Um, Raul, is there anyone else um, promoting at this time? I believe the people already promoted are the ones that I know of. Okay. If there's anybody else that would like to be promoted. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm also promoting Attorney Del Preet. And Attorney Lawless, will I be promoting Dave Martin for this as well? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. There we go. Dave, I saw you a minute ago. There you are. Okay. Everybody associated with this project has been promoted. <laughs> Raul, Good evening. Up, yes, thank you. Good evening for the record, Raul Ricardi from Cape and Island Engineering, representing the applicant um, and property owner at 50 Weather Glass um, Road, um, along with attorney Dave Dollar and other associated with this project um, across the street for this project, which is a relocation of a right of way. If, with your permission, I would like to share my screen. Yes, sir. So the project um, went before um, some court mm -hmm. um, review, and it's having to do with relocating on a, of a right of way. The right of way has been built for many years ago, and it was built 
out of the right of way legal limits. Um, if I zoom over to the top part of the plan that was submitted, the gray hatch um, right of way crosses the property line and it's halfway to the north of the right of way property line. So it's halfway outside of the limits um, for this right of way. Why it was built in this location, um, we don't know, but it has been located at this location for many years. So the court has ruled that the right of way has to be removed from the current location and repositioned and rebuilt within the limits of the right of way. The entire right of way is bituminous pavement. Um, what we're proposing to do is the majority of the new right of way will be um, bituminous pavement, except for the last 15 feet approaching the salt marsh, which will be um, a grid, a plastic grid with crushed stone um, filling. There is certain dimensions that were agreed on the settlement with the court or how this um, right away was going to be repositioned, the width of it, the slopes of it, and the terminal 15 foot of this right of way. In the past, there has been some use within the right of way all the way to almost the edge of the existing edge of pavement by the property owner on 50 um, weather, vein, weather glass. Um, and there had been a shed that used to occupy um, an area close to the top of the bank. Um, it has since been removed and a new shed has been located, but still in the right of way. The relocation of this right of way will also um, restore some of the gradings on this right of way that were done by the abutter to the south at 50 Weather Glass Lane. The shed is going to be relocated um, within the property of 50 Weather Glass. There are 24 trees that are proposed to be removed as part of this relocation of the right of way. Um, about 12 of these trees were planted by the homeowner on 50 Weather Glass and they're being realigned along the property line. Um, the rest of the restoration between the new relocated right-of-way and the southern property line in the right-of-way will be replanted with native species. By zoom to the area highlighting the proposed work, most of the area in this location, it's about half of the width of the right of way. And that's all going to be replanted, regraded. The existing shed at this location is being moved to this location. An older shed used to occupy this space over here. That shed is no longer. And what we're proposing to do is just kind of continue the existing grades from the existing right of way, just traversing the new paved roadway. An improvement we're proposing is installing a catch basin at this location with a subsurface leaching component um, to intercept all the water that is coming down to that point. We cannot really locate this catch basin at the very end of the pavement because then we get too close to groundwater and then we can't provide any leaching capacity for this drainage. So we chose this location at an elevation about seven so that we have enough separation to groundwater to, at the same time, propose some, some drainage improvements. The four proposed trees that are west of the proposed shed relocation are going to be cedar. And the trees that are being proposed at this location, east of the proposed shed, is relocation of the cypress that the homeowner installed within the right-of-way. The cypress are installed for the purpose of screening, um, so they it will be able to maintain um, the lower branches from reaching the existing house um, that is probably 15 feet from, from this um, evergreens. There's going to be a limit of work that's going to control the, the proposed activity within the site. The existing pavement that's going to be removed, that's all going to be part of an application from the abutter to the north that's going to be restored to some extent. And the property line that's located um, one foot north of the proposed new right of way um, is going to be um, is going to be the remaining place. There is a uh, 
concrete bound at this location towards the um, westerly side of the easement or the right of way um, that controls that property um, property line. There is also a proposed fence along the property line for 50 weather glass. And that fence is just going to go from the street property line all the way to the shed, behind the shed, and to the top of the coastal bank. That's practically the intent of this project is just the relocation and regrading within the right-of-way and then replanting of the areas that are being disturbed. Um, we did receive some comments from staff. Most of the comments have to do with um, the development on 50 weather glass. Um, I'm not completely um, knowledgeable of um, the history on the on the property, um, but there are some comments from staff on, on this property. There are some comments from DEP. Part of this work is taking place in a coastal bank, but the proposed revegetation and pavement area is going to protect the coastal bank from not becoming um, destabilized. And another comment having to do with protecting of the salt marsh. So during construction, we propose this limit of work at um, hay bales or similar compost rolls with sill fencing. And then this last 15 feet of the right of way, which is not going to be pavement, it's going to be crushed on within a plastic grid um, that's um, holding the stone from washing away. So that's how, how we're proposing minimizing any impact to the salt marsh. Um, the salt marsh continues to the north. So in the future, if the salt marsh migrates, it is still possible that it can migrate and reach into the stone and probably even go grow through the stone as um, ocean rises um, in the future. That's essentially um, the project at hand. And if there's any questions or any comments, um, we'll be happy to answer. Excellent. Thank you, Raul. Anybody else on your team that wants to, to uh, add anything at this point? Yeah, yes. Good evening, David Lawler, Attorney Lawler, on behalf of the Prestons. How are you tonight? Um, really, I just want to provide a little bit of a history. Um, the uh, uh, As Raul indicated, that uh, way back when, 50 years ago or so, um, whoever built the right of way, um, probably for convenience, uh, that's just pure conjecture, built a good portion of it on. Um, the Bergen's property, Attorney Lawless's clients. Uh, and there became a, there was at one point a survey and there became an issue as to whether or not, you know, over the past 50 years had the right of way, um, you know, should it remain under an adverse possession type theory and Attorney Del Preet and I and Attorney Lawless. And we worked out, um, uh, there was a land court case and we worked out this settlement after a very lengthy um, uh, mediation session. And Attorney Lawless, myself, and Attorney Delpreet, I will say, have worked relatively, we've actually very cooperatively, considering you know it's litigation, and, and came up with this plan. We have an agreement that was signed. There's still a couple of issues that were coming up to this meeting that have, um, I mean, we still have some disagreement on. I don't want to clarify them as major or minor, but certainly disagreement on a couple of issues with respect to the upper half of the road and a, and a few other matters. But what the essence of this agreement is, is that um, uh, my clients, the Prestons, will remove the fill and get it ready to put in a, a roadway type, or it's not a road legally, it's a uh, right-of-way paved. Uh, and, um, and then they would, and the, and the uh, Attorney Lawless's clients would then otherwise be responsible to move, to remove um, all or a part um, of the existing roadway, and then uh, relocate the existing roadway onto the easement. So that's just a kind of an understanding of the why we're here. Um, I think it's important for people to know why would you move a road that goes to the water over. 10 feet. So I, I just thought that was an important component to present to the, uh, uh, to the commission. That's all. Thank you. 
Jim. Yes, Mr. Chairman. So this, this, the board's seen this before, but not in this manner. This the 50 weather glass was under an enforcement order um, because of fill. So that's partly why we're here. The fill um, part of the fill is going to be removed. The grades are going to be returned um, to their previous condition. We have the spot grades from, or we have the grading from before and the spot grades. So if you look at your plan, the yellow, I mean, the red are grades before the fill went in. So that's, that's how we know how much fill went in and what needs to be um, removed. Um, the staff did have a few questions. I do want clarification of one thing, Attorney Lawler. You're saying your client is going to be removing the fill, and then the butters. Your client's responsible for removing the fill. Correct. And doing the regrading, and then Correct. the other uh, Mr. Bergen's going to be responsible for installing the right of way and doing the drainage. Who's doing the planting of the, who's doing all the, the shrub planting and everything? Uh, yeah, the, uh, the, any, any planting on the uh, right of way will be done by the Prestons. Any okay. planting on the Bergen's property, that's their responsibility. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, and how is this gonna be coordinated? I don't want that area to be obviously go in, remove the fill, have a very exposed site right next to the marsh, and then months go by. And we'll I, mean, I think that's important. I don't know if you guys want us to, you know, put money in escrow or, you know, and then the... Well, I think the, that's going to be... Both of us. I mean, I don't, what I would want, if what's good for the goose is good for the gander. I mean, if, if anybody's going to be doing it, it would, it would be um, dual. Um, okay. that's my position. Attorney Lawler may have a different position. I don't want to speak for him. Um, but it's clearly, I will, one of the reasons I mentioned that Attorney Lawless, Attorney Delpreet and myself have, we've got along pretty well, is that I, I don't see, certainly from the lawyer's standpoint and the engineer's standpoint, any issues of coordination. Um, we certainly would communicate with them when we intended to proceed with the uh, removal of fill and the regrading of the property and coordinate that so they would have enough time to get their contractor in line. Um, so it's my, I actually was, um, the Bergens may have already received some type of order allowing them to remove some of the, of the asphalt. And that's still in that my understanding is that's still in, in play. So mm -hmm. I'm, my guess is that's what they're intending to do. Um, so and I, I believe there must be some replanting on that. So I have, though I haven't seen it lately. Um, so the, my guess is that that's what they would do. There is an issue, as I think I indicated, um, uh, the Prestons believe that our agreement, and we have to figure that out amongst the lawyers of the court, states that the, Berg, uh, the, Berg, uh, the, the entire um, paved area from weather glass down to the water is gonna be removed and replaced. And I believe that they have um, a different opinion that they're only removing and replacing that portion of the asphalt that is located on their property. So that's one of the issues that um, we need to figure out amongst ourselves, um, whether that is something we can agree upon or it's some form of a, a court order to us is yet to be determined. But that's, I think we can, with that one issue taken aside, I think we can still coordinate something that would be appropriate with, um, or certainly something acceptable uh, to the commission. Um, so that's that's the plan on how we intend to proceed. Certainly from the Preston's point of view. Okay. Um, Raul. You're going to remove, you're going to relocate that shed. That's awfully close to that um, generator pad that wasn't shown on your plan. Um, like very close, like you have to kind of turn to be able to move in between that. Is that going to be an issue? I mean, where you have the shed located on the, out in the field, where you have your little ramp to the shed, 
you're going right into that generator. Right. In, in touch with the homeowner, um, what's the idea now is that the door will be facing weather glass and the ramp will be off of that side of the shed instead of the side towards the house. So the so door to the shed is going to be... Relocated the, to the end. To the side of the shed. To the side. Okay. Okay, that makes more sense. And the relocated cypress, those are awfully big, Raul. Those are some pretty big trees. Are you sure you're going? How are you going to relocate them? I mean, it looks great when you have a, a plan and you have that fence and then the trees are going to fit nicely right next to the fence. But in reality, these trees are huge. And they're not really, I'd say, how, how you have them on the plan isn't really the scale I'm going to go about. So, yeah, the, the client do does that? want. The client does want cypress. If he doesn't relocate the ones that he has on site, he will put new cypress to provide the same screening that he wants. Um, okay. But yeah, if he can't relocate the ones that are there, he will just plant new ones. I'm I'm skeptical you're going to be able to relocate. You know, them if Jennifer, I had this conversation with my clients. I I think I think we're gonna just uh, scrap the old the old ones, and I and I'm not sure that survive replanting anyway. So I think I we're going to put in a, yeah, I think you're right. And I think we'll take the advice, your advice. Uh, and, and, just re and plant new ones, okay. And plant new ones, yeah. So I guess, I mean, and the two trees on the end, Raul, how are you going to protect those two trees that are in the right of way closer to, I guess it's 51 weather glass, but looks like they're in that stormwater, that drainage system. The two that are close to the catch base, to the um, concrete bound. Yeah. Um, those two in the settlement, those two are to be protected. So we are protecting them. What we have near those two, and if I share my screen again. Um, Excuse me. So they're really close to the salt marsh. So this, it's these two trees close to the salt marsh. Um, the drainage is at this location. So not to be confused, the catch basin with the concrete bound. There's the concrete bound, and here's the proposed catch basin. So those two trees, what we're proposing to um, install around them is the plastic honeycomb grid, which could be cut around the base of that tree so that the tree doesn't, um, doesn't have to be removed at all. Um, and okay. then the crushed stone gets infilled into the, the plastic grid. Something I would like to clarify, there was an error in our submission when we submitted the narrative, we mentioned uh, a retaining wall. That was a carryover from a prior version of the plan and we forgot to remove it from the narrative. There is no retaining wall proposed. At one point there was some retaining proposed within the right of way, but that has since been removed. It was just carried over on the narrative, but there is okay. no wall. Okay, thank you for cl that clarification. So we've estimated it's going to take about 52 shrubs to replant that um, that right of way in the green area. Um, can you clarify that or confirm that that's going to be done immediately once um, after that slope is stabilized? Like regraded, and they're going to immediately plant it. Correct, Raul? If that's the condition that the commission wants, then that's what we have to do. One one of the things we don't want is uh, yeah yeah. This Jennifer, is I, I'm sorry. Can, can I jump in, Raul? Can I we not interrupt each other, please? I apologize. Well, that's what you were saying. So yeah, this part of this fill that is re being removed is fill material. So when we're dealing with fill material, it's sort of loose. So mm -hmm. we don't want that to be exposed for too long. Um, it doesn't slope much. We don't have a slope here of 30% or anything like that. Um, but we could um, lay down some mulch and start planting um, in anticipation for protecting any future erosion. Okay. Jennifer, I may. I, I just want to be careful of... Um, because the Bergens will then be coming in and working in a very close line, putting down you know, hot asphalt and 
there's going to be heavy machinery down there and things of that nature. I what the last thing I want to do is to plant the hill and then have it all uh, destroyed by, you know, the um, the contractors. So any type of, I guess, uh, logistics would have to be, as you indicated previously, worked out between the parties. But I'd like at some point maybe to put some some initial um, something to make sure, obviously, that there's no immediate erosion, but that that road goes in and then the final plantings happen after the road goes in. I just think that, that that's fine. I just want yeah. to make sure that 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 slope is not uh, exposed during most of the work. You can you can install jeep matting, something like yeah, that, okay. to secure the slope while the pavement goes in, and then the plants can go in immediately after the pavement and the drainage system goes in at the end. Perfect. Thank you. And that's what I wanted. I just I, I you know, fifty plants are expensive. That's fine. Raul, how are you addressing the DEP technical comments? So yeah, that was what I was touching a little bit about. Um, so for the stability of the bank, um, it is not a very steep bank, so we're proposing to plant it so it okay. doesn't become a, um, an erosion problem. For the salt marsh, um, we're protecting the salt marsh. We propose the limit of work about one foot landward of the salt marsh, and the end of the proposed um, grid plastic grid with the crushed stone infill it's about three feet from the marsh um, so we're not proposing anything on the marsh um, we're not prohibiting the marsh from growing in the future once this is um, operational and completed the marsh with the rise of the the ocean could eventually creep up into this crushed stone and continue to grow um, so there's we don't anticipate um negative impacts to the to the salt marsh or the coastal bank. The coastal bank will still continue to be there and it will continue to be a vertical buffer against um, floodwaters. Okay. Okay. Um, and my only other comment is that Attorney Lawler, you may want to advise your client that his dock is not in its chapter 91 licensed configuration and there appears to be additional floats on it that will need to be removed or permitted. Okay. I um, just found out about that yeah. recently that my client believes that it is correct and we just need some time to research it yeah, and look that's at fine. it. I'm just yeah. letting you, making you aware of it. Now no, it's in our radar. We can't unsee what we've seen. So no, I understand. Um, <laughs> and the only other concern, I'm just having concerns about the two contractor, how that's all going to, to mesh. Um, obviously, this is a very sensitive area, and we want to make sure that nothing is removed and remains exposed for long periods of time. Because the last thing we want is impacts to that salt marsh. And then we're all back here again, trying to figure out how we're going mm -hmm. to restore um, or repair damage to a salt marsh. So I really want all parties to be aware of that and to really work together to, to make this project successful and, and stabilize the area as soon as possible. Do you want a logistics plan? I may require that, yes. Now that I'm having not a great comfort level of how this is all going to kind of fit together. I, I can, again, again, I can't speak for um, attorney lawless or attorney Del Preet, but I, I, I certainly would not be opposed to some type of logistics plan and then coordinated um, between the attorneys. And then obviously the contractors would have to follow that. Mm -hmm. And we may keep the, this hearing open for that logistics um, methodology so that the board is aware of it and they feel comfortable with it. Okay. Makes sense. That's all I have for right now, Mr. Chairman. All right, Mr. Martin, you're up, sir. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in regard to Jennifer's concern, would it be prudent to suggest uh, jute netting on the surface? Uh, excuse of me, David, could you identify what what team you're on and who's in? in oh, I'm sorry. Bergen. I'm uh, on the Bergen team. That's sufficient. Okay. 
Um, sorry to interrupt. Not at all. Shall I repeat my suggestion or did, did that make sense to everyone? We already suggested that, Dave. If you're talking about the jute matting and jute netting on the bank, yes, we've already discussed that. And, and I suggest uh, in the roadway also. Okay. I think it's uh, in, probably impractical to have that transition between the two teams uh, be seamless despite everyone's best intentions. Mr. Lawless. Thank you. I, I just want to go back on a couple of issues very quickly. This all I'm came sorry before again. the board. What, what team are you on? I'm sorry, I represent Chris Bergen and his wife. Thank you. Right. And I just want to bring to the board's attention that this all actually started with an enforcement order that goes all the way back to 2017 that then was followed up with an enforcement hearing in 2021 about having added fill to the embankment. The issue of, of re relocating a portion of the, the paved right of way into the deeded right of way came up as a result of a lawsuit. The lawsuit is, does not operate right now under a court order, but rather a settlement agreement that all the parties have entered into. There are four or five concerns that my clients have about the plan. We're all trying to make this happen. There's no question about that. We are all trying to work together. We still have some internal issues that we're resolving. And one of them is the pavement issue. Uh, does the agreement as we've all entered into require my clients to replace all of the pavement or just to put the pavement to dovetail in where the, in other words, we can salvage the old pavement that's in the right location. And then we will just dovetail in the new pavement, which makes a lot of sense, but that's an internal issue we're struggling with. And I understand that who and how it's done is not of concern uh, to, the, to this board, whether we dovetail it or whether we remove all of it and replace it. I know that Attorney Del Pratt and Attorney Lawler have different opinions, and we are still working to resolve that. But to the degree there's talking about removing, uh, I will tell you that my clients in 2020 had an RDA that was approved by this committee, allowing them to remove pavement. And that's what we're operating on. It's still good and open as far as I know, till September slash October of 2023. That's the pavement issue. The second issue is that if you look at the plan that was presented to you, the area that's of concern where the work will be done, my clients are concerned that there's a portion that was omitted from that in the southwest corner. So it would be where the green, if the green space where you continue towards the water, you'll see that the red demarcation there shows that the bank level before the added fill was lower than it is now. So we, we believe that fill was placed into that area and should also be removed. As that was part of the original area of concern here when they, when they uh, uh, put all the fill in. The other issue is that my clients feel strongly that down the center of the green area, there should be a walking path. Uh, they feel that that's appropriate given that this is a right of way and that all the members who live on Weatherglass Lane have a right to pass and repass, they just feel that it would be appropriate to have a two-foot wide walking path in the middle of the green area. Uh, we also just wanted to confirm that there is no wall, the modular wall I've been told in the hearing, that that's been removed, although somehow it slipped into uh, a, the original notice of intent and the plan. The final issue is uh, the issue of the old growth trees that were mentioned before. In fact, if you look at page 19 of the notice of intent, there's photographs. And the bottom left-hand corner photograph is a view from the bottom of the, of the uh, paved right away as it is right now, looking upward. And in the right-hand lower section, you'll see a little white demarcation. That is the corner bound. And you'll notice that that quarter bound is actually 
right where these trees are. So the way that they've been plotted on this plan is a little bit um, askew. We believe uh, that those trees are half on the Bergen property and half on the right of way. There is also supposed to be, and probably is if you can zoom in carefully, that one foot area that's between the Bergen line and the top of or the northerly side of this new right of way. So when you take the one foot together with the fact that the trees are already halfway on the property line, we believe that there's plenty of space there to preserve both of these trees once they start to work on the installation of the true grid and the subsurface there. So those are the major issues of my client. Um, so we would like certainly some of these to be part of the order of conditions as well. Thank you. Mr. Delpreet, do you have anything you'd like to offer at this point? Uh, <clears throat> yes. Um, basically, I represent the 13 abutters on the street that have deed rights to that access. And I think what uh, started this whole shebang was the uh, request for determination to remove the pavement that's been in the access that my clients have been using for the past 40 odd years. Um, I also live on Weatherglass Lane, so I'm one of the people with the deed of easement. And there is currently an injunction that prevents any, any removal of anything down there, um, which I obtained so that we could get a resolution here. My clients really, you just want to have a 10 foot wide easement, which they have deeded to them. Um, we conceded the fact that the Bergens want to fix it, they can move it over so that we have 10 feet um, as shown on the plan. We're agreeable to that. Um, we've never heard anything about a walking path before. We've never heard anything about cutting the road before um, this last week. Um, as far as we're concerned, we have a settlement agreement, uh, which would enable uh, the plan to be done, be done completely. My clients are going to have 13 sets of eyes watching the work down there. So you'll know if anything um, gets left askew. Um, and that's really, I think, the crux of the matter from our point and would like to see the board approve it as it's presented so that uh, we can get this work done and my clients can get back and forth to Green Pond. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Ben? I have a question for Attorney Lawless. Attorney Lawless, and I thought we briefly discussed this when I met with you, Attorney Delpre and Attorney Lawler in the office. I thought we discussed the walking path and the, the neighborhood's gonna have a 10 foot wide paved right of way down to the water. What is the purpose of the path? The 10 foot right of way, paved right of way, is not to be used as a boat ramp. So there should be no cars or boats there obstructing someone's ability to walk down that pavement. What is the purpose of the path through a vegetated area? Part of the settlement agreement says that this is to remain a right of way open to all of the all of the owners of this prop of these properties, not just one. The way that this is being configured by, by the applicant is essentially that this is going to be his private little hill. And I guess my clients have a difference of opinion about that. And that's why we believe that this area is owned by everyone, not just the, the Prestons. And therefore, by having a, a walking right path down there, just makes it accessible to everyone who lives there. Because that's what legally it's supposed to remain. But you are correct. We did have this discussion. And uh, I do recall what your what you had indicated to me would be your what would be your recommendation to the board. Correct. Okay. I think the same is true about that area down close to the water. In the informal meeting, we discussed that area that's been left off of this um, project. Okay. But it is, if you were to just continue on the green towards the water, 
it's the white area. And you can see with the red demarcation that you uh, gave to us all, uh, the, the, the elevations are now higher than what they were back, I think you were using 2016 or 17 demarcation before the fill was put in. And that's why um, my clients wanted to see some of the fill out of there as well. I, I, I have to disagree with Attorney Wallace on that. And um, I do remember the meeting about the pathway and I just wanna make it clear that there's a 20 foot right of way and there's always been a 20 foot right of way and there's been a 10, always been a 10 foot road. And the, that area, though it's, we don't think it, there should be a path. There's never been a discussion about a path. There's no reason to have a path. Uh, but it doesn't stop anybody from walking on there through, you know, in the, you know, in the, in the little bit of wilderness that we're trying to recreate, it's not intended for that. It's intended to act as a buffer for the environment and for the animals and to provide some safety. And, um, but it's, we're not excluding anybody. There's never going to be a no trespass sign. It's not my client's little hill. It's part of a 20 foot uh, easement area that's usable as much by attorney Del Preet and his clients as it is by your clients. And, um, but it, just to try to stick a two foot pathway, it, it appears certainly to us just to be a little vindictive trying to, you know, create some type of, uh, you know, an issue that that's, that's the area that we're intending to restore for the environment. And that's, the, and that's what we're trying to do. And, right. and the area, other area I addressed, thank you. Ben? I have nothing further, Mr. Chairman. I think we're going to need a continuance. I think the parties need to get back together and discuss some of these. Some of these issues aren't really within the commission's purview. I mean, um, and I'd like to see a logistics methodology because I'm well, becoming what, increasingly yeah. uncomfortable with the timing of this. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. One of the first points that was made was that we have an agreement in place yet. Doesn't sound like it to me. All right, we're moving to um, Ms. Bergeron, you're up. Thank you. Um, Raul, my last couple of comments on the staff report were just about the restoration area. Um, are any trees being proposed in the area or just shrub material? Sorry, I have to unmute myself. Um, so yeah, um, the proposed um, restoration within the southern 10, 10 feet of this right away is proposed as just shrubs. Um, we had some ideas of some larger shrubs that we were proposing, but um, through the attorneys, we were told nothing big. So there is a list of shrubs that we are proposing that is sort of kind of making peace with the different parties. But no, no trees proposed within the the southern um, ten foot of the right of way, other than the ones that are proposed along the property line on fifty weather lane, weather glass lane. Okay, and when you say nothing big, is that for view purposes, not for maintenance, finances? Um, when I heard about <laughs> the coming back on the size of the shrubs we proposed initially, it had to be. It was something about allowing people to walk through. Right, That's yeah, because typically restoration areas are meant to grow into a naturalized area to be undisturbed. Um, but moving forward, um, when it comes to the proposed huckleberry, will those be in a sod or are you planting individual shrubs? I think shrubs are kind of hard to come by, Jen, if I'm correct on that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure. Um, okay. If it's if it's a, an alternate species that we will the, the board would like to see, then we could probably switch it over. It okay. also de depending on what's available at the time of installation. Perfect. Um, staff found that the creeping juniper really wouldn't be appropriate for this area. It it should be shrub material if that wants to be a a type of ground cover planted in between and amongst the shrubs. That's one thing. Um, and then we're just recommending if these are the three species proposed, rose, sheep, laurel, and huckleberry, if those are approved by the board, we would recommend that 
the species are planted in an equal mix just so the area doesn't become a rose garden that wouldn't be appropriate for this environment. Um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Commissioner comments, Betsy. Thanks, Jamie. So uh, I have a, a comment and a question, and I'll I'll give ask Raul the question first. And that's uh, how many yards of fill are you removing? I did not have Raul. that calculation. <laughs> I'm sorry. Raul, you knew I would ask you that question. <laughs> I should have come prepared for that. Uh, I did not did not calculate that. I'm sorry. Well, we're going to have a continuance. So we'll I'm, get looking that number. Forward. I'm looking forward to seeing that. And so that was my question. And my comment is um, I'm really not comfortable with any work starting in this area unless there's a clear plan as to who's going to do the work and when the work's going to be done so that it's done sequentially so we don't have any areas left there. So I'm really looking forward to the three lawyers and the two engineers here, whoever's involved getting together and solving all these questions before you come back before us again. Thanks, that's all, Jamie. All right, Courtney. Um, I would agree with Betsy. I, I think um, you guys are to be congratulated on trying to iron out a tough situation and um, you're not quite there yet, but you're getting close. Um, but when you come back to us, I think it's got to be clear as to who does what, because uh, particularly where it comes into conservation jurisdiction, we want to know whose feet to hold of the fire. So, you know, that's my only comment. All right. Don't wait. Don't wait until Christmas time because he brings out the coal for Christmas. That's right. <laughs> All right. So, guys, on that on that point, I mean, I, I don't know. It seems like it'd be beneficial to try and get one contractor to do the project as a whole. I mean, you can do, divide up the financials the way you see fit, but just no, think about be. that. Uh, and Raul, I have a question. Um, zoning's not our purview, but my question is about the shed and, and the setbacks because if you'd have to come back later for an amendment to change it, it just seems like you could be addressed prior, you know what I mean? Because, it, you know, you need to set back for the shed to the property line, but also to the generator. Um, just, you don't have to answer that. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, I agree about the walkway. I think you've got a nice 10 foot walkway. I'm not sure why they want needs to be one in the restored area, but um jen wouldn't the, this agreement be part of the file become part of the file gentlemen please provide the agreement to the board the settlement agreement that would be helpful it would help them understand and you're right jamie it should be part of the record so if we're going to if we're going to reference the settlement agreement we should probably have it in the project file so a copy of that would be helpful Thank you. Yeah, because because in theory that's going to clarify who, um, you know, who's doing what. To Courtney's point. In know, theory. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the more information, the better. Yes. Um, I agree. No problem with that. We have no problem with that. Thank you. All right, Kevin. Oh my God. <laughs> um. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> you know many decades ago I was an engineer okay sorry but you know if this if you guys have an agreement on what the heck you're going to do and who's going to do it I'd be happy to look at it and see whether in my opinion it it meets the the the, the conservation uh, regulations in the town of Falmouth, but this was entertaining, but it's a long meeting tonight, and uh, we really didn't need this. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like anything, you know, we know they're going to need a continuance for certain things. The biggest thing is making sure it's clear what the continuance is for. 
so that it doesn't have to go on and on and on. All right, Steve, you're up. You're on Steve, mute. Steve, you're mute. Steve, you're muted. <laughs> There, thank you. Um, I, I, tough following, Kevin. But uh, I, um, I just want to clarify what's within our jurisdiction and is was not whether it's a two foot path or unless they're going to remove some of the restoration plannings to put the path in. I don't care. I don't, I don't see the need for it, but I don't care either. Um, and. It seems like there's another another couple of issues here that really aren't part of our conservation review. So if we could just get down to that, I, I would appreciate it. Thank you all for attending. I appreciate it. Now, Thanks, Steve. Um, Jen, you made the comment this isn't a boat ramp, um, or somebody did. Um, is it going to be physically blocked to prevent vehicles from going down there? I'm thinking that might be necessary because there is someone that actually uses it as a uh, boat ramp. There's a boat that is down there or was down there previously. So Raul, if that you could incorporate even just boulders down at the end, two boulders, something like that at the end of the, the uh, right of way, or we can condition it because that is a concern that when you put this nice new pavement down, it's going to be a very attractive area for someone um, to to launch a small a small vessel. So um, I'm thinking that some sort of deterrent, even just two boulders down at the end, would be helpful. We can condition that as well, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I mean, I would think boulders are going to bring kayaks or canoes or such, but I think it would be a a boat ramp in the traditional sense. Oh no, I there, there's a reason I made that statement. There is a concern of the staff just because of what's what we've observed down there. Let's put it that way. Yeah. All right, Courtney. I just want to uh, second your comment that you should figure it all out and hire one contractor. I think that makes the most logic. No other comments. Yeah. We can't force that, though. No, we can't, but I, it just makes the most sense. Yeah, you and I are in the same business, we know. There you go, you know, common sense. Get you every time. All right. Gentlemen, um, how much time short... are you going to need? Um, I believe we're looking for um, April. Um, Attorney Lawler, if you could uh, review this, I think we're looking for whatever's available in April. I'm out of pocket the last three, two and a half weeks of March. I have started trial. So anything in, certainly not the first week of April, I'm not going to be able to work on it at all. So um, I don't know if Attorney Lawless or Attorney Dupree want to chirp in. The earliest possible date in April works for me. Or would the appropriate hearing dates be in April? We have April 5th available, and the next available after that would be April 19th. I, I'd prefer the 19th. I think we, we're going to need to get some stuff done here, and I'm not going to be able to really work in the last two and a half weeks of March on this. So, Well, it's your case. I know. So then that's a good point. I'm trying to be cooperative with Attorney Lawless, though. Um, I've been very cooperative, so I, I want to show him the same respect. The 19th, okay, Bob? Yeah. Okay. That sounds like that's the date. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna be out of the uh, I'm gonna be out of the country on the 19th. Hmm. <clears throat> See, there's the upside of Zoom right there. <laughs> he, he doesn't want to have a meeting I'm on kidding. vacation. I'm what's kidding. the what's the next week, Jennifer, after the night? The next available would be April 26th. That's great with me. Attorney Delpre, would that work for you? The uh, at the request of the applicant, I make a motion to continue until actually, April. 
Actually, it's those two weeks uh, that I'm out, the 16th through the 30th. I'm just out of, I'm out of the country. Okay. Um, <clears throat> next available after that is May 3rd, gentlemen. Going once, going twice. I'm available. Attorney Lawless. I will be there. Attorney uh, Dupree, Adele Pre. That, that is available, and I just I stand corrected by my secretary that the 26th is available. We will be uh, in back at that time. Okay, so we're back to April 26th. We're all in agreement. Raul, Dave, you're all quiet down there in the corner of my screen. At the request of the applicant, I make a motion to continue this to April 26th. Third, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this hearing until April 26th, correct? Yes. Correct. Yes. Alyssa, before we vote? Just a comma to check the public chat. For that. All right, so the request, is, the, the motion and a second is continuous until 426. I'm just clarifying the date. Jen, if you would check the public chat function, please. Doesn't appear to be anything in the public chat, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for keeping me on my toes, Alyssa. All right. So we have a motion and a second to continue this till 426. If there's nothing further, I'm looking. Nobody's jumping up and down. All right. We're voting. Betsy. I felt her eye. Courtney. Bird eye. Matthews eye. Kevin. O'Brien eye. Steve. Adam eye. It is unanimous. We have continued this until April 26th. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I know you guys are volunteers. Much appreciated. Good night, everybody. We'll see you in a month and a half. Thank you. Thank you. Jamie, it's going to take me a minute to move. Yeah, I, I have. Um, um, I lost my note. Oh, okay, Rand's Canal that's... Amendment is uh, being withdrawn for the moment. So anybody waiting for that hearing, again, Rand's Canal, um, that's going to be withdrawn. Just so nobody's waiting unnecessarily. All right, Jen, you ready? I can move forward. You can go forward, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Next up, Falmouth Yacht Club, Inc., zero Clinton Avenue, lot H. Falmouth Mass for permission to conduct beach nourishment and beach maintenance. Then I'm assuming Doug, the, oh, Raul, are you doing this one or is Doug? You? Okay. I just saw you. I thought you had taken yourself out. Mr. Chairman, Welcome Raul's to here to, from Cape and Islands to present his project. Good evening. For the record, I'll be starting from Cape and Islands Engineering, representing the applicant and property owners at Zero Clinton Ave. Um, the owners are the Falmouth Yacht Club, which are um, located right across the street from this beach. Um, the project here is a project that has been ongoing for several years in the past. It's received several orders of conditions for beach nourishment at this same location. Um, the last order of condition was issued in 2019. It expired last year. Um, so we're proposing to do the same as in prior years. So if I could share my screen. Yes, sir. So this is the site. It's actually just east of Ty's Motel in Falmouth. Um, the resources are Vineyard Sound, which is land under the ocean, land containing shellfish, a coastal beach. There is a coastal dune over to the northeast corner of this beach. Um, and then there is Clinton Ave all along the north um, property bound of the of the site. There is another coastal dune at the north of the riprap um, between the riprap and the edge of the road of Clinton Ave. So this project is proposing to pro, to install 200 cubic, ye, cubic yards, sorry, of 
sand on this beach um, for a span of three years, 200 cubic yards each year um, for the length of the permit. In the past, it was limited to 600 cubic yards for three years of the permit, but that 600 could have been used at any one given time or spread out through those three years. What the client would like to do now is get a, a permit to do 200 annually um, for the life of the permit. Um, this 200 cubic yards in the area that we're proposing, which is around 15,200 square feet, comes out to about a four inch thickness of sand to be um, spread through the beach area. No proposed beach is along the edges of the dune so that no sand kind of interferes with the existing dunes and no proposed um, beach nourishment is proposed right at the property line. So we're tapering off at these locations from the four inches to zero. There's also a limit along the mean high water line where we're tapering down to meet the limits of the, of the high water. Um, this location can be staked for the time of construction. We don't want to stake it too early, um, but during the beach nourishment, we can actually have this um, delineated so that the limits are well known. Um, the owners will also like to continue maintenance of this beach by removing debris um, from the site. Um, they rake the site. Um, I know there's there's been a prior condition about when they do the, the screening and raking, any pebbles or any stone and gravel that gets picked up to be put back so that none of these larger particle size are removed from the site. They have to remain on site. Currently, because of the loss of the sandy beach, there is a lot of, a lot of exposed gravel and cobbles. Um, we're not proposing to remove that, but um, we're agreeable to a condition that those cobbles and gravel sized particles are not to be removed. Um, the beach nourishment is going to be placed over them. Um, any raking or any screening that's done for maintenance purpose that picks up any of these particles will have to be put back and not removed from the site. Um, so technically, this is just um, reissuance of prior permits. And if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you, Raul. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Just to clarify, Raul, there's supposed to be, there's going to be no relocation of the cobbles. That's okay. correct. So yep. if it's get, if, during the screening, some stones may get picked up. They just have to put them back. Okay. Uh, this is just a, um, again, as Raul said, Mr. Chairman, just uh, ongoing beach nourishment and maintenance. Um, we'll incorporate the same um, conditions we did before. Raul, you're not natural heritage territory over here, are you? No, um, natural heritage is, uh, I don't know if it's 200 feet off the shoreline, but just off the shoreline. It doesn't reach the beach. It doesn't reach the beach, okay. Um, okay, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right. Ms. Bergeron? I have nothing at this time. Thank you. All right. Bro, what's explain the screening process? <laughs> well, <laughs> when I saw that, I just thought of a commercial that I've seen on TV when somebody has a, a little rake on the back of a car and they rake the, the beach and it picks up all this trash and somebody just goes and picks it up. But I guess what they do, it's a it's a tire loader and there's like a, a screen behind it and it somehow rakes the beach. The raking has to be parallel to the shoreline to avoid some shifting of the sands. And the whole purpose is to pick up any trash or debris that is left behind. And okay, I think so in, some other what the, I cut you off. Yeah, and I think in the, in the past uh, special condition, there is a time of year restriction that, that was in place for, for that activity. Um, but I, I don't really have all the inside details of how it's done. We'll have to uh, we'll have to discuss that, Raul. The the use of the machine that may not be they may have to do it by hand, which is fine if they're because um, they're putting that beach nourishment over the cobbles. 
So there shouldn't be really any need to screen. So that we can deliberate. Yeah, I just want clarification that it's not, you know, excavating. No. All right, Kevin. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Oh, Raul, you mentioned the Tides Motel. The, the abutting lines there are, are clarified and the beach impact, the uh, cross beach impact is, is understood by both parties. Um, I haven't had personal communications with the Tides Motel um, ownership, but the property line will be delineated and it's been delineated for both projects because there's ongoing pro um, permits on both sides. So it is pretty clear where that property line is, regardless of how the fences are located on the property, um, the line hack has been established. And we're, we're tapering off. Um, the four inches taper off, that can easily happen within two feet of the property line. So it's, it's not a big, um, a big change. Yeah, the, the the farther side of the co of the tides beach is all cobble, so and and it's an interesting transition from yours to theirs. I just want to make sure that that's not impacted. That's the way nature wants it. All right, Betsy. Roll will all two hundred yards. Per year, will all 200 yards be put in at one time? Or are you going to put like 100 yards and then in the middle of the summer, another 100 yards? I mean, is my, there... My what understanding, are you asking? <laughs> my understanding was that the 200 yards was going to be spread at one given time. Okay. And then it was going to be maintained throughout the usable year. And then the next year, another 200 and then maintained... Um, during the usable year, um, during the summer, they they don't want to be interfering with the um, the beach cores, mm -hmm. so they just want to do the work once, open the beach for the for for the beach cores, uh, and then wait till the next year. Okay, thanks, Courtney. Um, I have no no question other than. Would when is it you would propose to do this June sometime? I believe the prior permits have established some times of when this can be done. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can open that document, okay. but as I look for it, um, I can take more questions. Okay, I, I don't have any other questions. All right, Jen, is there anything in the public chat function, please? Nothing in the public chat right now, Mr. Chairman. All right. Roll, do you have anything else you need to add? Can we close this and then if there's if there is a, a time that we can put that in in deliberation? Yes. May I close it, Jamie? Please. Make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Heard second. All right. We have a motion and a second to close this hearing. If there's nothing further. All right. We're voting. Again, the motion and the second is to close the hearing. Betsy. Black well, or aye. Courtney. Bird aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Steve. Patton aye. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, Raul. Thank you. Thank you, Raul. Are you done? Oh, I guess he's done tonight. <laughs> Raul, are you done? You have one more? Okay, I'll put you back into attendees. All right. The next hearing had been previously continued, which brings us to... 190 Associates Road, Realty Trust, 190 Associates Road, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to replace a stone walkway and terrace in the same footprint. Install a fence, construct a patio and terrace with stepping stones and to install restoration plantings. Ben? 
Yes, Mr. Chairman, I've promoted Tom Bunker up to present his project. Hi, Tom. Hello. Um, Mr. Bunker, you're up, sir. Thank you. I hope I can be a little quicker than at least one of your others. We do uh, for director, my name is Tom Bunker with BSS Design. Uh, we did this survey of this property and uh, uh, drew the uh, proposed plan. Um, with the help from uh, Horiuchi Celine, I actually did the design work. Uh, Chris Horiuchi is in the audience, and she will at least be available. She'll be available to ask questions, uh, but I will uh, start. start um, the do you want me to promote Chris up? Um, yeah, she could come up, I suppose. I, okay. Unless she tells you no. No, I'm promoting her up unless she doesn't accept it. Well, you can start, Tom. Okay. I will uh, share the screen. So the property here at, uh, at uh, 190 Associates Road, you can see on the locust map, it's at uh, Chappaquoy Road coming in from Chappaquoy Beach, you know, where it wraps around and then Associates Road. So this property actually fronts on Chappaquoy Road out by Barzos Bay. And, but the house is up at Associates Road, you see here. And there's a little pond. Uh, this area of lot one is dune, uh, pond area surrounded by some fringe salt marsh and a, a bordering vegetated wetland in here, which, which I have colored in a little bit. Um, so the other than coastal bank, we have the furthest landward uh, resource areas, the bordering vegetated wetland runs up into this location which has a 50 foot zone A running through here um, around the wetland. There's a co uh, uh, salt marsh running through this. There's a little outlet down to the uh, to Chappaquoit Harbor here, um, West Falmouth Harbor. Uh, so there's a salt marsh vegetation in this location. And then there is, of course, a salt marsh zone A, which is running as 100 feet running through this location. And of course the BVW zone A was through here. BVW zone B runs out this location. And at the, the, the revision I had to make was, uh, I didn't even recognize this at first, but of course there are coastal banks at the north and the south end of the uh, house. Um, Farley is existing uh, stone wall and steps forms a coastal bank at this location here. And at the south side of the property, there's another stone wall and the ground slopes up around there. So this, this is coastal bank also. And so there is a 25 foot zone A because they're within a within a hundred feet of another wetland resource area, but not, not touching. So there's a 25 foot zone A and then the remaining remaining 75 feet zone B. And so we have a zone A and a zone B up here also. And of course, uh, since the house was built, the uh, flood zones have changed. So now the uh, flood, the velocity flood zone runs through just the, the front or back part of the house. So velocity zone BE elevation 18, which changes to an AE elevation, uh, also 18 behind it, but then there's also the uh, 25 foot wide Falmouth velocity zone in this location here. So uh, what they're proposing to do is uh, the, the largest part of this is to run a fence around the backyard and then um, back in, back into the house in this location. Uh, you know, gate here and a, a gate on this side. And then within the zone A and B, currently there's a round uh, uh, 12 foot diameter patio that will be removed and I'll put in a, uh, <clears throat> a uh, uh, 
a, a terrace, a larger rectangular terrace patio with a hot tub on it here, a portable hot tub, but it'll be on it, and stepping stones in this location. Uh, uh, the first submission of the plan, this area was called out as being um, driveway, uh, impervious driveway expansion until I uh, added the coastal banks and that put all of this up into uh, area which, which needed would have to be mitigated. So the uh, driveway expansion uh, in this location was removed. So we have this addition of uh, coverage here. The front walk, which used to be or currently is a, uh, <clears throat> a straight, straight up parallel uh, walkway is now these uh, bluestone irregular stepping stones and that adds uh, some coverage in zone B of the uh, of the wetland and of the coastal bank and then there's some river birch three river birch being removed here here and here um, also now some of these things were noted in the staff report and the the fact that these river birch were not shown on the plan. So this plan that I'm showing you now has some uh, edits just made today in response to the staff report. So these three river birch here, and of course, um, I noted in the staff report the, the, the driveway area, um, but that is no longer in this proposal. So I've added, added this note saying lawn to remain. Um, and well, Alyssa also noted that there's a new air conditioning heat pump was just added since I was there last, but it was it was added after we uh, or it was added before we staked the property actually, but it was there. So that's uh, two feet by three feet, and I added that into I have the uh, coverage calculations with the uh, new hot tub, the terrace and the hot tub and the stepping stones and the front walk expansion, uh, all in zone B is taking out the existing round patio is 400 square feet of expansion in zone B. A uh, corner of the hot tub and the terrace in zone A, 70 square feet. And then I added down here the uh, six square feet in zone A. So the uh, mitigation increased by 18 square feet. So what we had on there was 1,067 square feet is now 1,085 square feet, uh, which is 130 shrubs. And I think Alyssa had 122 shrubs. So 18 square feet takes basically two shrubs. Um, so we, another thing I added, uh, um, a fence, uh, rather a, a gate in the fence. There was a question how how the mitigation planting would be accessed for maintenance to keep it free of invasives and all. So I added a gate here and another gate down in this location. And as part of the mitigation, uh, we're over a thousand square feet. So I added a, a a cedar tree here and the additional eighteen square feet of mitigation just uh, filled in this corner. Whoops. Right in little little eyebrow of eighteen square feet of mitigation. Um, so that is the that that's the numbers of it. And um, Chris probably I think has more. Well, I think she said she certainly answer questions. I don't know if she has anything to say at the moment, but I'll take this down and take questions. Thanks, okay. Tom. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman. One moment. So, Tom, I really appreciate you trying to address the staff report. Um, don't take this personally, Tom. It's not that I don't trust you, but I don't trust anybody. Um, so, I really appreciate you putting those elements on the plan, but I feel really a lot more comfortable if we had a chance to review it before we close this hearing. I know you're trying to push things along. Um, so, 
if you could get us a copy of that plan tomorrow, we might be able to review it for you for next week. Um, so I'm just going to come out and say that. And again, it's nothing personal, Tom. Um, but that right. said, one of the issues I have with the fence, Tom, um, mm -hmm. and I think is the fence running um, through the mitigation and having that, some of that mitigation trapped on the lawn side of the fence. I think we had a project and I do believe it was yours down yeah. in Racing Beach, Gunning Point, yeah. Dusty Miller Racing area. Beach. Yeah, right. that area where we had you move the fence, move all the mitigation either behind the fence or in front of the fence, one of the two. But we did not want that mitigation trapped in that lawn area. So if we could show that fence relocated to include, to go around that mitigation, that little oval yeah. area of mitigation, that would be great. Did you say we have the option of either being all in front or all behind? Well, I think if it's all like if it, I, I think you wanted, I know you wanted the mitigation all behind the fence at the one on Racing Beach so that, you know, not mowing wouldn't. And I'd have the same concern here as well. Why have the mitigation if you're going to have a fence behind it? So I'd like to see that mitigation, that fence, excuse me, that fence placed um, in front of the mitigation, between the mitigation and the lawn. Mm -hmm. You can keep your gates in it to maintain, but I don't, I don't, I'm not real comfortable with it running directly through the mitigation and kind of having half the mitigation behind the fence and half in front. Certainly it can be close oh. enough. I think it can be close enough so that the, the branches of the mitigation shrubs can grow through the fence. Yeah, but you know what I'm asking for, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, perfect. And, and, and by the way, it'll be... Um, uh, the fence will be three inches off of the ground. Yep, I saw that. that. Three inch clearance. Yeah. Yep. That's on. You put the trees. You show the AC. We're talking about the mitigation in the fence, so we're going to relocate that fence. Um, Alyssa had, and she may be able to address it as well. Had some concerns with the amount of boulders and rocks in that northern mitigation area. Have you taken those into account when looking at the mitigation? Well, I had one one group, which I, I mean, I showed it on the plan. Um, I didn't, I went around that group, but that was just sort of an estimation of the size. So mm -hmm. there was partial taking that into account, but I didn't measure every boulder, every stone. Okay. Well, I'm sure we, there'll be some fear things. That's fine. And then if you just want to correct your narrative with the correct DEP number, number yeah. that you referenced. That yep. would be great. Um, so again, thank you for adding those elements and addressing the staff report. We just can't really, you know, confirm to the board that we've evaluated it and we're in agreement when it's just on Zoom and we're racing all over the place. So, but I mean, I think we can get that done for you for next week, Tom. So we um, yep. mm -hmm. Find out what our schedule looks like next week. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. I'm just going to bring up our schedule next week. Thank you. Alyssa. Uh, Tom, three things. Just one of the comments in regards to the proposed species, um, just because we've been paying such close attention to the amount of rows proposed on site. Um, if there's four species, I'd say if they can stay within a corner of that percentage, just so the rose doesn't overtake the area. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I noticed, I'm sorry, I neglected. Um, for the the coastal bank on the northern side of the property at the staircase, yeah. um, if you can just double check that A zone line, it doesn't look like it's 25 feet off. It looks a little closer. Um, so you may just uh, double check. Yeah, it, it's it's twenty. Oh. I'll check it. I had twenty five feet from the part of the coastal bank that's within a hundred feet of the BBW. Oh, oh, I understand. So that corner. That that corner. Gotcha. The other, the very, the northern part of it, the wall. So it's not within. It's it's beyond a hundred oh. feet from the BBW. 
I understand. Okay, thank you. Um, and I'm sorry to say, I just noticed the fence is being proposed mostly in a velocity zone. Yes. So, okay. It is. It's not a board fence. It'll be. I mean, the the shrubs, the shrubs and all, will take a lot of the hit from any velocity. I don't think the fence will have any impact on on that. Okay. Um, yeah, I think our general takeaway is just no fences and velocity zones, but I'll let the board chat about if this type of fence can be approved. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, Mr. O'Brien, you're up, sir. Uh, no questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Steve? Thank you. Once again, staff, you've gotten all the questions answered. I think the I understand the delay in the getting things that you could take a look at. So I'd approve the continuance when we get to that point. Thank you. Betsy. I have no questions. Thanks. All right. Courtney. No questions. And uh, my assi assistant doesn't have any either. <laughs> well, well, they've covered all bases. All right. Jen, is there anything in the public chat function, please? Nothing in the public chat, Mr. Chairman. All right. Mr. Bunker, you have a request for us? I will request a uh, one week continuance to allow you time to, uh, well, so I can move the fence and then you can review it. Okay. Alyssa, will that give you enough time to review those small changes Tom made? I can manage. <laughs> So I'll make a motion to continue this hearing until March 8th. Third, second. All right. We have a motion and a second to continue this until March 8th. If there's nothing further. All right, Betsy. Gladfold or aye. <clears throat> Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. Aye, aye. It is unanimous. We have continued this until March 8th. Thank you, Mr. Bunker. All right. Thank, Thank you, you. I'll be back in a couple. Mm -hmm. All right. Next up are continued requests for hearing under a notice of intent. First item has been previously continued, which brings us to oh. Joseph R. Shaker, Eldridge Drive 8. Oh. LLC, all right, 8 Eldridge Drive, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to reconstruct the access, existing access stairs, conduct invasive species management. And I think I'm, my agenda shows that's all I have. So I, I think there's more verbiage, but I don't have it. I'm sorry, that correction was supposed to be made. Oh, okay. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I've promoted oh. Raul from Cape and Islands Engineering to present his continued project. All right, Raul, let me, before you start, um, just to clarify the, the quorum, um, Steve, you're not on this quorum as this is a continued hearing. Oops. Sorry, Raul. And I've got Katrin from Wilkinson as well, Mr. Chairman. Sorry about that. All right. Yes, good evening. As, um, as mentioned, this was a continued hearing for. Um, Three weeks ago, I believe, three, four weeks ago, um, the reason for continuing was to provide some revisions to the site plan. And I'm going to start sharing my site plan to go over some of those revisions from the first hearing. One quick okay. second, Raul. Is there anybody else I'm promoting up for this project? Um, I don't know if Mr. or Mrs. Shaker are in the audience. If I have they... a Susan with her hand raised. Is that Mrs. Shaker? That's possibly yes, her. Yes, that should be. Yep. Okay, I'm going to promote the property owner as well. Yes, so I'll proceed with sharing my screen. Um, so the project was um, continued to provide a few changes to the plan um, and also to coordinate the two plans that were submitted. One plan was submitted as the site plan, which is this one um, in front of you. And the second plan, it was the... Um, land management plan, which is 
this second plan right here. So the coordination part had to do with labeling all the existing trees and labeling the size of the trees. So the revised plan that was submitted um, addressed that um, request from the commission. Another request was to densify the number of shrubs that were being proposed within the coastal bank um, and within the restoration area. That has also been done. And there were some comments about the, the trees that were being proposed to be removed to reassess the, the status of those trees um, for their removal and the restoration or replication of those trees with the proposed trees. And I'll leave over that to Katrine to answer some of those questions. So with that, um, I'll pass it over to Katrine. Thanks, Raul. Thank you. Would you like me to share my screen? Yes, if we're going to refer to it. Okay. Um, sure. Okay. Is that working? Yes. Okay, great. Good evening. For the record, Katrine Higgins from Wilkinson Ecological Design. And as Raul said, we adjusted the plant quantities and also the, the species selection um, based on your feedback from the first hearing. And as uh, Raul mentioned, we, we are showing, um, zoom into that. Um, in the location of, the, of right off the corner of the house, there was discussion in the last hearing regarding the trees. Um, there are two trees adjacent to the house that the applicant would like to have removed um, because those particular two trees closest to the house are leaning and they are already kind of um, rotting in the tops. You can see how they're, they're rotting. So they're, they're in the most degraded condition of all those, that cluster of trees. So we definitely are asking to remove those trees. Um, then the other cluster, the cluster that's slightly farther away from the house, they are native trees. They do not block, the, or, you know, they're, they're not currently blocking views of the water. But they're just not great trees. They're 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 growing in a way where none of them are really thriving, and so the idea is that the applicant would like to remove that cluster, including that four-inch sapling, and then replant a really nice tupelo tree there, um, along with those cedars that are growing or that would be proposed closer to the property line. But you'll see we've added a new tupelo there. So the idea would be to have a nice um, full tree to be able to thrive there in the future and provide biomass. Um, so we really wanted to get your thoughts on that approach. It's slightly different than than what we were showing in the last um, uh, the last hearing. You know, we've added that too below to really kind of maintain that space with a nice nice tree. Um, in addition, uh, recently the staff recommended a fence to delineate that the coastal bank and the naturalized area. And we touched base with the applicant and he was interested. He heard, he understands the reasons for it. He was hoping to, instead of doing a fence, to do like granite bounds, which have, are similar. I'm sure other projects in, in Falmouth have done that. So to these four inch um, square bounds, granite or concrete, whatever the material to be placed along there, um, actually more permanent and providing the same um, benefit of of a fence, just kind of more aesthetically blended in, so it looks more natural than having a fence there. So overall, we feel like this is a great opportunity to provide improved habitat on this property. Getting rid of knotweed is knotweed, as you know, is one of the worst plants out there. So this is a great opportunity to get rid of it now before it takes over any more space. So we're happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Katrine. Sure. Ben. I'm going to, yes, Mr. Chairman, I'll start with the little, oh, Mr. Shaker has his hand up too. Oh. I'm missing all these little raised hands. I can't see the raised hands when they're sharing screens, so. Oh, here it comes, Mr. Shaker. Okay, Katrina, um, I understand your client's um, concern about the single rail fence, the board will have to take that up. 
but if your clients are going to have concerns about the fence, then maybe we should rethink the plant material we're putting there, the sweet fern and the, the puntatilla, because that's why we're asking for this, because we, you know, see these types of plants, you know, frequently being mowed in mitigation areas, and it's to try to stop that. And Sure, sure. So you know, we didn't I, have a chance to show them photos of that it, I, because I think people picture a fence, but we didn't have a chance today to show it's a low profile. Like yeah, so, so um, we might be able to in the next few days show photos of what that would look like. Mm -hmm. um, if that's I mean, I've seen them done where you don't even notice the fence is there because once the vegetation grows and kind of grows over it, it's almost an invisible barrier because you have your plant. Right. Because that's one of the reasons we we ask for these little single rail fences. It's not a big tall fence. It's right. a foot or two off the ground, is because of the plant material that's being proposed. Yeah. Um, and the board will have to determine if they feel that the one two below tree is sufficient for the replacement of what are you removing? Six trees on that site. It was yes, plus the sapling. Okay. Um, and the two below, and then the two cedars would be planted in that general area as well. Hang on one second. The two, one east, two cedars are, you know, a yeah, little bit more to the property line, but in that general area. And these trees are being removed. Can you repeat why they're being removed again? The, so the two that are closest to the house really do need to be removed. They're not in good shape at all. The This oh. cluster of trees is, they're native. They're not blocking views to the water, but they're just not very healthy. They're not doing much. They're growing kind of in and amongst themselves. And and the, the this property was... I, as I understand it, not maintained. The landscape was not maintained for a while. So these trees just, the idea is just to get a better, better, more substantial tree in there that can grow and have more biomass and, and really just look better too from on the, on the, in the landscape. Okay. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right. Well, Thank you. Um, just to make one comment about the newly proposed tree, I believe it was Maury's comments on the last hearing. She wanted to see larger trees in the upland, smaller trees on the bank, and an increase in quantity. So we've increased the quantity by one, but that will be taking the place of a sapling now to be removed? Yeah. Essentially. And we, we could look at increasing the size of that. I, I noticed on the plan we're showing, to her point, that tree probably could be bumped up in size. Okay. If that made a difference. Okay. Yes, the um the board can discuss that. And we're showing a, no oh, I'm sorry. I'm oh, just no, go I'm ahead. sorry. Just we're showing a number seven to number ten, but if it made a difference, that definitely could be bumped up. And we would just make sure that it was in a in a you know sheltered spot right there. That's the only concern about planting big trees. But Maury, Maury mentioned that it's probably sheltered enough there to to increase the size. Perfect. Um, for those of us who don't know, what is a number seven to number 10 size? That's just the gallon of the pot. The gallon. So you okay. could go to um, the caliper, you could go to one, one and a half, two inch caliper tree. Okay, excellent. Um, and just a comment to Raul, uh, I'm sorry, I can forget our conversation during the last hearing about the out hall on the beach. If that is to be removed, can you just put a label on the plan so we have that recorded in some fashion? Yeah, we talked about it last hearing and we agreed that we'll remove it. During our survey, we never located it. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll just have to take a quick site visit to note it on the plan, but that's easily done. But yeah, we agreed that it was going to be removed. And, and touching back on the size of the trees, something that we was discussed is that in the past couple of seasons we've had here in the Cape, there's been a lot of drought. So planting mm -hmm. larger specimens, um, it's kind of harmful for those bigger kind of tre trees and shrubs. Um, so we probably need to consider that if we keep getting these droughts, um, it's going to be difficult for those larger trees to actually take. 
That's a good point and something definitely to be taken into consideration. Thank you. Um, yes, and the point just about the out hall, just so we don't forget it. But thank you. All right. Let's see. So um, I don't have a problem with the two trees that are closer to the house, but for the other trees that are being removed, do you have like a number of trees and number of caliper inches? Yeah, it's shown on our plan um, there. If you see the existing conditions portion on the top right of our plan, there's a number 10 oak, a number 14 oak, a number 10 oak. Oh, sorry, no, number 10 oak, number 14 oak, number six, and number eight. So 38, four caliper inches. Mm -hmm. Is that what yes. that is? Yep. And you're offering one tupelo for that. One tupelo plus this, and there's scrub oak on the bank. We're proposing four scrub oak on the bank. Um, and then the two cedar that are along the property. But, but the bank to the scrub oaks on the bank are part of the restoration for the invasive species removal. Correct. Well, so basically um, that up that upper area, you're removing four trees and replacing with three trees. Forget about the bank. Yep. So so I would suggest at a minimum have one more tree, another two below up there. Okay. And just space okay. them. You know, I understand. You know, we all have areas where stuff grows up and things grow too close together, but yeah. just some far enough apart. Okay. Yeah, that I'm if that's a great idea. Adding another two below. Okay. In that vicinity. I get this from Mark Kaspersick. Mark loves tupelos. <laughs> so if They're I see best. people suggest a tupelo, one tupelo, two tupelos. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, I like I like them too. Yeah, they're really pretty. That's all, Jamie. Thanks. Yeah, Courtney. I agree with Betsy. No other comments. Kevin. No comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. But do you agree with Betsy? I do. <laughs> Always. <laughs> All right, Mr. or Mrs. Shaker, do you have anything you'd like to add at this point? Sure. Um, uh, can you hear me? Is am I coming through yes. clear? Yep. yep. Yeah. So listen, we're, we're we appreciate the comments from everybody. We appreciate your time. When I look at the agendas, when I get on these things, I'm amazed at how much you deal with in one night. It's crazy. So, you know, we're just trying to do um, really clean this up and make this for the long run very important it's an incredible expense for us to do all this on the hill and i we understand it's voluntary and all that stuff but seriously we're not we're trying to do it so that the trees aren't clumped up things can grow things can thrive and i think your suggestion was fabulous about you know maybe putting a couple there um it's really about the stability of the bank and what we've we've been told by wilkinson is you know, if you do the right things to the bank, you put the right species. Um, if you put these extra trees on the bank, um, that you're really doing the right thing for the environment on the bank, and it's totally worth the expense. So we understand what they're in business for, and they're well renowned for this. So we just appreciate the time. And one of the things I was going to mention is I know oftentimes when we're dealing with um, the commission, um, you're going to step off and, you know, have a meeting and make a decision on this. Um, and, and I was hoping if there was anything that anybody wanted to add in as a condition, they could mention it now rather than surprise myself and my wife later, because our goal is to really go through with this, but we don't want for any reason to have to step away from the project because it's, you know, it's something we think is great for the property and great for the environment here. So I would just enjoy if anybody would have any questions that we can reference now versus um, have a condition thrown in later that we didn't discuss. Uh, we're trying to be as transparent as we can and do the right things. But at the same time, I just was hoping if there were anything that um, might be a surprise later that we could probably address that now for anybody 
versus take it under and then, you know, give us your answer and then have us sit there and have to decide whether we go forward with the project or not. So that's kind of where we're at today. But again, we really appreciate your time. When I look at these agendas, I just really can't believe how much you deal with in a night. So do you have any questions for us or anything that may be on your minds that we might be able to address today? So we're not surprised by any specific conditions that are added later that, you know, maybe, you know, we're surprised by or can't, can't deal with. Well, I think you just heard everybody's comments that the additional Tupelo requested, so. The additional Tupelo, yeah. the discussion of the single rail fence, and it's not, sort of the fence is literally like that big. And like I said, the idea, and I can send Katrin some pictures I have of a site, you don't even see it on the other side of Sweet Fern. It's, it's completely hidden. Um, and it's because of the plant material that's being chosen why the staff is recommending it. But it's going to be something the board deliberates on whether or not they'll be comfortable with the concrete bounds or they're going to want this more like single rail fence that's not very far off the ground. It's fairly uh, the point of having it is so it's not noticeable. It provides a visual barrier so that when you're lawn maintenance crew is there. They don't accidentally run over Katrin's carefully laid out planting <laughs> plan. It just kind of, they bang into this little wooden thing that they don't know is there, composite wood, whatever. The only yeah, so other condition you. that, <laughs> sir, I'm still talking, the only other condition that you may see is a, a monitoring requirement, which I'm sure Wilkinson's already told you that that's standard in most of these restoration projects that a condition to do annual monitoring will be required. Um, other than that, off the top of my head, I don't think any other conditions would be a quote unquote surprise to you. Thank you very much. Um, Not a problem. I mean, we, we don't we don't want to uh, spend the money on those plants and have the lawnmower folks hit them either. No, um, I understand, that, that, but that, I mean, there'll be a few other conditions just on maintenance, survivability, things like that. Um, but I don't think there's going to be any huge surprise where you would walk away from the project. Okay. Well, we'll wait and get it. And I, we appreciate your time and no, we agree with you. We agree okay. with you on, uh, on all these little items that are going to protect what we invest in. So thank you very much. Not a problem. Thank you. Jen, is there anything in the public chat function, please? Since I've been missing everybody's little hand raised, um, mm -hmm. let me Nothing in the public chat, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right, what are you thinking? I'm thinking I'm going to make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Will that filter? Third seconds. All right, we have a motion and a second to close the hearing. Is there anything else anybody would like to offer? All right, we're voting on closing the hearing. Betsy. Lad filter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. It is unanimous with this quorum. We have closed the hearing. Thank you, Thank Raul. You. Thank you, Katrine. Thank you, Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right. Next up, Joseph Mirazola, trustee, Joseph G. Mirazola, revocable trust, 2018. 15 Moses Road, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to raise, R-A-Z-E, -E, an existing single family dwelling and construct a new single family dwelling on pilings. To reconfigure the driveway, reduce the patio, install dry wells, and to construct a masonry wall and fence. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm promoting the Tom Pehi from the, I believe they were the landscape designers, and I'm grabbing Mr. Bunker. to present his project. Tom is coming in. 
Where did Tom go? Oh, there's Tom. Tom's calling his way in. There he is. Tom, there you're up, is. sir. Okay, thank you oh, for the great from Tom Bunker with BSS Design. And also here is Tom Mulcahy, uh, the landscape architect for this project. Um, I will uh, start out showing a couple of plans. Uh, let's see. Can you see me now? Yes. So when when last we met, I think there's about six items uh, that uh, we had to take a look at and change. Um, I don't have to go over the existing conditions again, uh, but <clears throat> I'll run down the items that uh, uh, that were of concern to you and show how we address them. Uh, item number one, uh, we the architect rather changed the plan so that the uh, enclosure on the ground floor is not more than 200 square feet. I can pull that up right there. So th this is now, this plan actually shows two things. So this, the storage areas become smaller, separated from the entry vestibule. So these two together uh, make what, 197 square feet. So in that we're under the 200 square feet, and uh, let me see. Item number three on my my list was to do something or remove the enclosure around the rinse station. So there's no enclosure now, no no boards or fence or or anything right there. It's just kind of how people used to do it. It's just a just a fixture on the wall that'll you know spray the spray the water and get the salt off you. Uh, I guess I have to keep the bathing suit on when they do it. Um, on the question of a generator or air conditioner, on the first floor plan, here it is over here. So the original plan, the deck uh, only went out this far, which was, uh, I don't know, about, I can't remember, is that five or six feet out? Um, the total eight and a half, you have four, 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 some total now is six, three. So, yeah, it was, that was only three feet wide. And and then there was a space in here, it's the steps going down. So, the deck got this much bigger 27 square feet bigger, which makes a difference in that the uh, coverage by structures for zoning purposes. But there was already a patio on the ground floor. Um, I can pull that back up. So this always had, it's still shown here in the background. You can see a patio pattern here. Uh, so it, the point is it does not create any new coverage as far as uh, the government regulations are concerned because there was already a patio there. Um, so and there there is no generator planned um, and the air conditioning condenser will be up on the deck above the uh, flood zone um no fences so the fences have been removed there was a fence along the north property line actually when we had the hearing a, a couple of weeks ago a few weeks ago we did the the fence along the south property line had already been removed but now it's it's still off and there is no fence proposed along the north property line. Um, Tom Mulcahy can address that, but I think it's a matter of um, uh, starting out with larger plant stock that will fill in more quickly along here. I believe there are bayberries in, in this these two lines of shrubs. The uh, drainage, the water, uh, the uh, engineering department. So this is the drainage that uh, we're putting in here. So rather than have a trench drain there'll be a surface drain built into the cobble apron so a little little waterway running down here to a uh, a small well, a 16 inch diameter h20 grate um which will be then be the water will be piped over to this this dry well in this location and that was uh you know for the engineering department 
and the pea stone mulch has been removed and the ground surface will be covered with bearberry and mulch under the shrubs. Um, the uh, catch basin did increase the size by, I don't know if I now noted it here, but it increased it by a, a few square feet. Uh, but it's still, there is a reduction in coverage with this project. So there's no mitigation, still no mitigation planting uh, required. So I'll take this down and maybe Tom Mulcahy would like to speak about the uh, the landscape. Yep, uh, I think we, as Tom just stated, we addressed every uh, concern from the previous hearing. And I'm really just here to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, sir. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Tom, back to the architectural. You're talking to this, Tom? Yes. Uh, Tom uh, Bunker. Sorry. Sorry, Tom. Yeah. Mr. Bunker, back to the architectural. Um, what oh. is that little area? That used to be enclosed, but now it's not enclosed, but it's still partially enclosed. Yeah. Like a little cubby now. Like a little cubby, frankly. I'm not I remember seeing a question from the let me let me put that up. I have to look at it on screen. Uh here. Probably not sharing, but I'll let me let me share the put it up in a second. The, yes, I know there was a question with the architect. That is is a wall there. It's it's a continuous wall. And what's going to prevent? So the whole point of having it open is so there's no additional storage in there. Right. How are we going to prevent stuff from being stacked and stored in a door up here? Um, well, I guess I guess you'd have condition or say that, that that wall part of the see this is this is a landing so the part of it is not a I mean this has to be enclosed part way up. This is one, two, three, four. About 10, 10 steps up. So it's about seven feet up this landing. So I mean there have to be at least at that height. Because this this is elevated quite a bit um, to enclose the rest of this stairway. Um, but there does not you, you could condition it and say that it can't be enclosed down to the ground. Come on, Tom. We can, you know, that's almost un, you know, unenforceable. Oh, it can't be enclosed down to the ground. Well, then I'd like to see a revised architectural showing that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the only question I have. The board might not be concerned, so we'll see. You can stop sharing, Tom. Thank you. Yeah. That's the only comment I have, Mr. Chairman, is we removed the doors, but we kept the space. So if that's truly what the board was looking for that that be open, then it should be open. Uh, that's all I have. Alyssa? I have nothing to add. Thank you. Courtney? Uh, no questions. All right. Kevin? Um, seems to me I remember something about wanting it open. That's all. Steve. A little bit of a trouble. Um, I don't have any additional questions. I think he answered the questions we had. Thank you. Let's see. Yeah, Tom and Tom, thanks for the listening to the last time and <laughs> making the modifications as we discussed. That's all I have. No. All right. So the only question is how we're going to deal with that. 
that piece, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Kind of quasi enclosed, but not really. So you're only going to enclose part of the stairway. Is that what you're ultimately saying? No, I think it's fully enclosed. No, I think it'll be fully enclosed. I'm just saying that that landing where the stairs go up then makes a turn. I'm just saying that at that point, that, that landing is, is pretty high up, maybe more than six feet up, maybe seven feet up. So if for the stairways to be enclosed, the, that area would not have to have a wall all the way down to the ground, which is what I'm saying, but the, the stairway would be fully enclosed. All right, bear with me, please. I'm just trying to, trying to find a way that it can be, if you will, accepted, but. Can I ask a question while you're looking? Yes. Um, so from the landing on those stairs up, that's all conditioned space in within the house. Is that correct? No. No, that's from why I'm looking at the plan. From the, from the landing up, seven feet up, is enclosed conditioned space. Oh, 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 yes. I mean, I would think even the bottom of the stairs is it's enclosed. Right. Um, but it's open below. Honestly, at, at the risk of sounding like I'm, I'm accusing bunker of doing something because I'm not it just looks like it's a sleight of hand it, it it just looks like really that whole even the landing and, and upper section of the stairs should be enclosed should be in the enclosure do you know what I'm I saying think, well I think if you look on the um I'm looking now but the uh the the, the first floor plan shows that landing fully enclosed. It's just that where where it's on the on the from the ground up, it the, it shows the enclosure around the stairs from the ground up, but from that landing up they're dashed in because I think because they show on the, the first floor plan as being enclosed. I mean I, I don't know if it, it's it's an architectural standard or whatever, but it's there, there. I'm sure. I'm sure there's there's a fully enclosed top to bottom. But what I was saying is that underneath that landing, and and below that landing, it would not have to be. And and they're not enclosed, but there is a wall, as Jen pointed out, along the north side. Mr. Chairman, I promoted the property owner. Um, yep. He had his red on hand raised. Thank you, uh, Jen. Um, yeah, so that that is intended to be a wall on the north side that runs the full length of the property. I know it does make that area look like a cubby. The, that was not the intent to store anything there. It's just because, like, if you think about the way that flows, to have it stop open and stop again, I mean, it just it 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 just it would make the house frank terrible on that side and we're just going for symmetry um there's a staircase there there's not going to be much room we've met every other condition gracefully that you guys have asked us to do and without question so you know I, you know interpreting that up there i think is a little you know unfair that's not the intent it's just the intent to have a wall so that it looks like a house and not you know a gap here and then a gap there and 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 it just looks uniform. What about shifting the storage? So if you shift the storage down and then reconnect it with the vestibule, then you have a gap at the end where you have the deck and the rest of the house almost overhanging. Um, so you know it, it's just one continuous wall it, it it looks architecturally the best and and again just you know 
to interpret and say, oh, there's a cubby there now, so you're going to store stuff. Like, I just think that's unfair and unreasonable to accuse somebody of of doing something that it, it, that's not intended for. The rest I'm of the house- Excuse me. I'm not accusing anybody of anything, sir. I've been doing this for 18 years, and I've seen just about everything. So it's not personal. It's not an accusation. It's a comment on the plan and what can result from the plan. Yeah, so I mean, we'll we, discuss we, could, it. we could store, we could, we could put anything under there. I mean, it's going to get exposed to salt and it's going to get corroded. And so we're not going to put anything there for those reasons. I mean, you could say we could put everything under there that isn't even out in the open. You know, I mean, it, we're, we're not going to store stuff there. It would get destroyed. It would get wet. It would get corroded. Um, there's no reason to put anything there. It was, it was 39 square feet. So we're not trying to, you know, game the system to get an extra 39 square feet of storage. I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right, is there anything in the public chat function? No, Mr. Chairman. Ready for a motion, Jamie? Yes, ma'am. Make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Third, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to close the hearing. Anything anybody wants to add? All right, we're voting. Again, the motion is to close the hearing. Betsy? Gladfelter, aye. Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, and good night. Everybody, good night, appreciate Tom. it. Good night. Thank you. Good night. All right. Next up, John T. Malloy, 119 Silver Beach Avenue, Commonwealth, Mass. For permission to construct a single family dwelling with a deck porch, patio, drive under garage, balcony, rent station, and elevated platform to reconfigure the existing driveway and to install dry wells and mitigation plantings. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I know. Huh. I promoted Doug Schneider up from Cape and Island. Oh. I see Jeff Johnson here. I'm going to promote Jeff Johnson as well. Hi, Doug. Is, is it your project or is it Jeff's? Uh, this is mine. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. I promoted Doug from Cape and Islands up to present his project. All right, Doug, you're up, sir. Thank you. If I may share my screen. Yes, sir. There we go. Um, Doug Schneider from Cape and Islands Engineering here on behalf of Tom Malloy, the uh, owner of 119 Silver, she Silver Beach Ave, uh, located uh, over near Wild Harbor on the western part of the, uh, of the town. Um, just a little uh, assessors might give you a general idea that, that, that the lot has is, is fronted on Silver Beach and then surrounding in the back by an unconstructed paper road um, for the assessors. Um, existing conditions for the site. Uh, this property unfortunately suffered a catastrophic fire in January of 2022. Uh, shortly after that, we were hired to do a existing conditions survey before the remains of the house could be torn down for safety reasons. So in front of you right, as you see in front of you now is an existing conditions plan that was done a year ago for Mr. Malloy so that he could start planning on the, to, to replace the house. 
Uh, our resource areas are, we've got a, a bordering vegetated wetland off in the back that was delineated. Uh, we're totally within the coastal storm flowage area, AE 15 and 16. Um, the wetland area throws off the 100 foot buffer zone, uh, zone A here and zone B that goes through, through the house on the site at the time of the fire, there was the house uh, with deck and stairs servicing it, stone driveway in the southeast corner, a shed that was constructed uh, in 2020 or so uh, in the middle, of, right next to the house in the middle of the lot, together with another smaller shed in the rear of the property. Uh, I'm going to jump to a couple of aerials just to give you a quick aerial view of uh, before after, uh, just to give you a quick quick view here. This is the house at 119 prior to the fire in October of 2021. Uh, you can see the sheds, the two sheds that are on the property, limits of clearing around the property, uh, gravel driveway shared with a neighbor. Um, then this is April 22. You can see the damage from the, the fire that happened during the middle of a snowstorm, and they had some real trouble getting uh, equipment there. So it was a, an absolute total loss. And then we jump to uh, September 22. The house is gone, been removed for safety reasons. Uh, Mr. Malloy also removed the small shed that was on the back of the uh, northeast corner of the property had installed uh, silt fence and the like for the, for the work that was done to remove the house. And now on to the proposed. Uh, see if I can zoom in a little bit on this. So we have our proposed site would, will be a new elevated house in conformance with the FEMA flood zone requirements. Uh, it's an AE 15 zone. So the first floor in this case, we're actually going up to elevation 17 ground elevation around the house is six to seven roughly. Uh, so the first floor will be about 10 feet up in the air to conform to the FEMA flood zone requirements. We've got a deck and stairs coming off the back with a little patio area underneath the deck uh, connecting to the existing shed that's there. Um, There'll be another set of stairs coming up on the front side adjacent to the existing driveway. So they park their cars and then walk up onto the stair, up onto the uh, an open porch on the front of the house. And then on the southwest side of the house, we'll have a drive under garage. Since it'll be elevated enough, we can do drive under parking uh, and storage underneath the house uh, with uh, paved runners it leading into the garage area, whereas on either side, uh, we'll be installing dry wells around the house to pick up the roof runoff. Uh, we do have a slight increase in area, uh, impervious area in the B, B zone that results in some mitigation uh, that it encompasses uh, so the increase in, in area from the house uh, as well as staff noted that the shed that was constructed in 2002 is with the deck and area, it's slightly larger than the, what was approved back then of 190 square feet with the 95, 195 square feet with the deck and a uh, little step in front. It's a little over 400 square feet total, uh, including, you know, the shed was basically 200 square feet, which was what was approved. Uh, so we've added mitigation from our original plan that was submitted to account for that. Uh, we, we have a decrease in the A zone because of the shed that was removed in the back. We've got a little patio, a little paver patio uh, in the middle of the yard that's being removed. Uh, so we end up with a net increase uh, in the in the buffer zones of about 1,200. Sorry, sorry, 600 square feet with about 1,200 square feet of mitigation plantings in this area to consist of, uh, we've got the list over here, bayberry, honey, honey, 
high bush, blueberry, arrowwood, sweet pepper, and a couple of uh, cedars uh, in this area, one required and one to replace a, a cedar that still exists on the property next to the house that will need to come down for the construction. Uh, when we initially submitted the plan to the notice of intent, staff identified a, an area on the north westerly portion of the property inside of the Crystal Spring paper road layout here that had been cleared at some point 20 years ago or so by previous owner and has requested that that area be uh, restored. So we've added in what you see in the light green as the area to restore what had been previously uh, cleared in the past and that amounts to um, about 3,300 square feet, 3,370 square feet of restoration. Staff also suggested we plant a couple extra trees in that area. So we've got three other cedars inside that, that area. Um, a, let's see, what else, what else? We've got a portion of the driveway that'll be removed uh, and, and shortened up a little bit to help with the mitigation. Um, That's it. I think we've got a. I think we've got a good plan that uh, improves everything here. Gets the house up and out of the flood zone or the new house, allows them to rebuild what what they lost, uh, restore the areas that were altered years ago, as well as the mitigation plantings. Uh, we think we're in compliance with all the necessary performance standards, and we are looking for a positive order of quarter conditions to allow us to proceed. And I will stop sharing. And I turn it over back to you, Mr. Chairman. I was muted on myself, Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Doug, thank you for making the changes of the plan to the plan. Just like I said to Tom earlier, we appreciate you trying to get the changes to us. Unfortunately, we can't review them while you're going through Zoom. So um, I think you were well, the only, I can't remember if it was this one or if it was Tom's, were the only changes to this plan versus the one you presented with the trees or were there other slight um, modifications the, the in one, response to the staff report? The one that the, uh, I, I, we forwarded over you an email with the the revised plan. Yes. For in response to to your staff report. Okay. Yeah. And on that, we added the three trees from what we had previously submitted revised to pick up the the restoration area. Um, the plan that we sent over today uh, bumped up the mitigation area in re in that result of the shed. Yeah, the shed. Uh, okay. The shed cache that we weren't aware of before. So it, it's it's the only additions to the plan were the trees and the increase in the mitigation. The increase in the mitigation, the circle around the proposed trees. So you adjusted the mitigation area. Correct. Okay. Um, I don't have any questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Doug. All right, Alyssa. Hi, Doug. Um, just my last comment on the staff report. The original limit of work, the silt fence fabric is currently in the wetland. If that can just be removed at someone's earliest convenience, that would be great. Thank you. All right. Betsy. No questions. Right. Courtney. No questions. All right. Kevin. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Steve? If I could unmute myself, I have no questions. <laughs> All right. Jen, is there anything in the public chat function, please? Um. Nothing in the public chat, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to make a brief 
I'm looking at something real quick here. I just wanted to make a brief comment. Doug, you had made a, a statement that some of the rest of the area we're having you restore was done 20 years ago, correct? But it wasn't all the area to the side of the house. So if you bring up your plan again, um, that little area more near Silver Beach Ave, that was more recently cleared. It was back behind near the shed, that longer portion. So the big circular more portion of the restored area that that was cleared within the past couple of years. I just wanted to make that clarification. That's all. Thank you. All right. What are we thinking? You want a motion? Yeah, John, are you okay with the plan? The revised? Yeah, I went through the stack that, but you know, um, we're just going to reserve the right in the future that if we're not comfortable proceeding with a plan that was today, even though I know we got the staff report to you yesterday and appreciate the effort that we're going to reserve that right to continue so we can review the plan. But I think it's it's fine. So I'm going to make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Bird second. All right. And I asked you if there was any public comments. Did I not? No public chat, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing. If there's nothing else. All right. Betsy? Glad filter aye. Courtney? Bird aye. Matthews aye. Kevin? O'Brien aye. Steve? And aye. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. Good night. Thank you very much. We'll like, come back for another one in a couple oh, of your by water. Okay. I'm gonna move you back into attendees and then I'll promote you back up. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Next up. Michael Ryan, 140 Associates Road, West Falmouth, Mass, for permission to reconstruct a detached garage, install a pool with a patio. Fence, cabana, and rent station. Reconfigure the driveway, install mitigation and restoration plantings, and reconstruct the front landing. Ben? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I am promoting Angela Tanner and Mike Borselli to present their project. Hello, Angela. Hi, Mike. Hi, how are you? Mr. Borsell, you're up, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Mike Borselli, Falmouth Engineering, representing the applicant along with Angela Tanner from Crawford Land Management. This is a continued hearing. We um, presented the plan to you folks on two other occasions. We've made some refinements, changes, edits to the um planting scheme and the number of trees uh proposed um we submitted revised plans my my revisions were uh pretty simple i just had to update the tree mitigation notes with the number of trees ultimate number of trees we were proposing um and i don't even know that there's a reason to share my screen because there's no details on my plan that i really need to show you that have been revised um, I think we satisfied all the issues and concerns. We worked closely with staff to address all those concerns, specifically about some areas that were designated as um, um, voluntary restoration when not proposing to be um, actual uh, restoration. Um, I don't want to use the word mandatory, but they're not optional. They're, they are in fact going to be performed. But I'll I'll leave that to Angela. I'm going to turn it over to Angela, and then we're both here to answer questions. Thanks, Mike. Angela, you're up. Hi, this is Angela Tanner from Crawford Land Management Genic Studio. 
and I can show you the updates on the plan if it's okay to share my screen. Yes, ma'am. All right, so the areas of the tree plantings have not changed. The proposed trees are all in the same areas and then uh, the areas have been labeled. I actually did use the word mandatory. I, I put it everywhere that I could. I put it on the plant list. I put it on the, um, on the plan. So this diagram down here has been updated to show that instead of this corner here, this section here and this section over along the property line, those are all mandatory restoration areas that are part of the tree replacement and the colors correspond on the plant list. And then the optional restoration area here is just this big gray area. And then there's another smaller area here, which is mostly uh, existing trees. There's not actually a ton of room in here to plant much but uh, there is some invasive material in there. So we have done that. And then we also provided the tree, the proposed tree caliper information, which is here in the mandatory tree replacement category. There's the trees removed. There's the mandatory replacement plantings, 32 trees for a total of 48 to 62 inch caliper inches plus the 260 native shrub material. And that's in addition to the, um, oh, sorry, I'm having a hard time with my Zoom function apparently. Um, that's in addition to this mandatory knotweed restoration, which also has shrub material associated with that. And um, that that covers all of the changes that we made. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Angela, thank you. Thank you for, for listening to the staff's concerns and incorporating it. This was not an easy plan to, to follow and, you know, it, it took a tremendous amount of Alyssa's time to, to review it and kind of come up with our comments. And I appreciate you being responsive to our concerns and our comments. So I appreciate that, Angela. Thank you. Um, and I don't believe I have any questions. Yay. Oh. <laughs> Alyssa. Uh, nothing to add, but also a thank you. I'll throw that in too, but I'll, I'll give Michael a couple of points too, as well as Angela. I mean, thanks for working with staff. And it's a complicated project, and there's a lot to it. It looks yes. it's going to be great. It means to leave you out, Mike. That's okay. All right, Kevin. No comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, Steve. Nothing to add. Thank you, Betsy. Uh -huh. It looks good. It took a little while to, to zero in on this, but uh, yeah, it's going to be nice when it's it's all planted. Courtney, I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> oh, is it time for the joke? Is your tongue tied? <laughs> hey, never mind. All right, Jen, is there anything in the public chat function, please? There is nothing in the public chat, Mr. Chairman. Thank then I'll you. make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Third, second. All right. Mike, you sure you don't want to continue on something? You know, I'm, I'm, never mind. I think I'm fine. I think yeah. we're <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second to close the hearing. If there's nothing further, Betsy. Gladfelder, aye. Courtney? Third, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. 
Steve. Aye. Aye. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Thank Angela. Thank you all. Have a very night, Mike. Good night, 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 Angela. Night, 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 Angela. Take care. All right. Bring him back. Next up, requests to amend an existing order of conditions. First up is Rands Canal Association, Inc. Zero, Rands Canal, North Falmouth, Mass. Request to amend the order of conditions for Mass DEP number 25-4337 to permit an extension of the approved maintenance dredge area. Ken? Yes, Mr. Chairman, that is being withdrawn and they were filing a new notice. Okay. I knew that was coming, but I figured I had to read it in for the record. Yep. That's correct. No further action required. Next up, 41 Bywater Court, Falmouth, Mass. Request to amend the order of conditions for Mass DEP number 25-4673 to permit the removal of the existing deck in order to construct a new deck, relocate the previously approved rent station, construction, I think it's supposed to say of an elevated platform for AC and generator units, removal of the existing shed and stepping stones and installation of additional mitigation. John? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have promoted Doug Schneider up from Cape and Allens to present his amendment. Welcome back, good Doug. Evening. It's good to be back. Uh, good evening again, Doug Schneider with Cape and <laughs> Islands here on uh, behalf of the owners at 41 by Water Court. Um, if I could share my screen. Yes, sir. Let's see, make sure I get the right one. The, the project in front of you at 41 by Water Court, Officer Drive uh, on the south side of town is a project that has been in front of this commission a couple of times. We're here in front asking for an amended order of conditions. Uh, just to give you another little view where we are, aerial view of the property. Uh, this is the plan that was approved by the commission back in July of 22 uh, that involved the elevation, uh, rate, elevating the existing structure with some additions uh, to make it all conform to uh, the requirements of FEMA. And part of that was doing some restoration on the side here. And at that time, the existing deck was to be elevated up with the house. And that over time has, that has changed in the design pro process. The project is way underway. They've elevated the house. A lot of the additions are done. Um, it's under, or at least they're underway, not said done, it's underway. So this, the amendment I'm going to involves like removing the existing deck that was on the original house and removing the shed. I'm going to jump to the proposed conditions plan. Uh, you can see what we've got highlighted in pink. It's, this is the new deck area, uh, with the new rinse station over in here removing this section of deck and stairs, removing the shed that was in the back in, that was in the A zone, a little bit of the shed, a little bit of the deck area steps were in the A zone also. Uh, hey Doug, do excuse have, me, could you blow that up a little bit? Uh, certainly, sorry. Okay. That a little better? Yes, thank you. So, Let's see, where was I? The, the, this is the proposed deck over here on the east side of the house is what the request for the amendment is. Uh, like this, the original deck was proposed to be elevated. This section of the original deck was be, is being removed. The shed that's in the background here is being is also to be removed, resulting in a reduction in the impervious areas in the 
uh, A zone as well as the steppers that went to that back area. Um, we'll be in, so we're proposing a elevated platform to service the AC units and the new deck and stairs coming out in the front, uh, rinse station underneath with a, a dry well for that. As a result of that uh, increase, uh, we inc we're increasing the area of mitigation by about 90 square feet. Uh, it went from about 756 to 850 square feet of area. So it's just bumping the, the, the restoration or the mitigation triangle out a little bit. Uh, pretty straightforward request. Things like that the house is under construction. I do have a just like a 3G rendering uh, that shows uh, the deck area that we're talking about. You see the back of the house here where their deck is being removed. So it's in line with the back of the house. Doesn't quite come all the way to the front of the house. Um, I think it's looking pretty good. And with that, I will stop sharing and turn it back to you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Doug. John? Yes, Mr. Chairman. So, Doug, I think we asked the question and Jeff clarified it today. So the whole deck is going to be wrapping kind of around. So you're only increasing your mitigation by 100 feet. Is that because you're taking that back portion off? If I missed that, I'm sorry. Yes, correct. The okay. back portion of the existing deck is coming off. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No other questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Alyssa? Yes. And just to note on that, Jen, I think also the shed removal is playing a role yes. in the increase of the deck size. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, Commissioner Coleman, Steve. I had to pick up the shed. The one thing I thought I had a shot at. Okay, I have no <laughs> other comments other than that. Thank you. Let's see. The stepping stone, Steve, that adds to it also. That's all, Jamie. <laughs> Nothing gets by this board. Courtney. No comments. Kevin. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Jen, is there anything in the public chat function, please? Nothing in the public chat function, Mr. Chairman. All Motion right. to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Glad filter. Third. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to close the hearing if there's nothing else. All right, Betsy. Blood filter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, Doug. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Night, night Doug. Night, Doug. All right, next up, continued requests to amend an existing order of conditions. Karen and David Howe, Zero, Vineyard Street, Falmouth, Mass. Request to amend the order of conditions for Mass, DEP number 25-4580, to adopt the special conditions associated with the Department of Environmental Protection's superseding order of conditions. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I am promoting up Attorney Wood, Attorney Daniels, and Stan Humphreys of ECR, ERC, um, to present their request to amend. Except I'm having, Stan, you have to do something on your end. There we go. Jennifer, do we also have uh, Jeff Johnson? Yes. Please. That's why Jeff was here. Okay. Right. All right. 
who's who's a uh, chairman of, of your group i'm trying to promote jeff up it's not he has no. to accept the for me to promote him on his end so okay oh here he comes All right, everybody's here. I can make a brief statement if that's okay, Jen. So uh, good evening, Glenn Wood, Rubin and Rudman, uh, Environmental Council for the House. Uh, this is a, a, a beach nourishing project that the commission approved uh, some time ago. Uh, it was appealed up to DEP. It was opposed by the neighbors. DEP issued a superseding order of conditions. It was then appealed to an adjudicatory hearing by the neighbors. Within that adjudicatory hearing process, working with DEP counsel and with Jen, uh, all the parties came to uh, an agreement, a settlement agreement, as well as proposed special conditions for the final order. That final order, after at least a half a year of delay, finally was issued. And we're finally in a position to come back in front of the commission to request an amendment to the bylaw order of conditions uh, consistent basically with the final order issued by the, uh, the DEP under the State Wetlands Protection Act. Um, and that's why we're here this evening. Um, as part of that uh, process, uh, the commission staff uh, and myself have been in communication They've requested a few additional uh, uh, conditions, which are specifically um, proposed conditions 10, 11, and 12 that de deal with a time of year restriction for beach nourishment. If the commission members recall, one of the issues this commission had back at the time was that the original notice of intent proposed mecha mechanized uh, beach raking. The department did not uh, allow that either. And so that is not part of this uh, proposed amendment, nor is it part of the final order as issued by the department. So this is only beach uh, um, manual uh, beach raking. Uh, it's for th up to 300 cubic yards per year. We've worked on a beach uh, profile uh, plan in terms of determining uh, placement of sand. It can't be below mean high water. It can't be in the dune grass. It's in a very specific area as already approved by the department. Um, Stan, as our coastal geologist, or Jeff with Cape and Islands can uh, address specific questions you had. One one issue that's come up tonight as we've watched this evening, though, I would say, Jen, and I'm, I'm, I guess I'm confused about it. My understanding of it is that we're being asked to enter into a time of year restriction uh, due presumably to piping plovers and lease turns. We are not in estimated habitat. Uh, in listening to the Falmouth Yacht Club OO, um, hearing before, um, I guess my question uh, is that it didn't seem like there was a time of year restriction for that project, nor is there one for the Askapeskit Beach Association, which has a beach nourishment allowance, which, which takes town dredge spoils, which is the majority of this beach, uh, to the east of our client's property. I was assuming that we were agreeing to a time of year restriction because that's what this commission was requiring on all beach nourishment projects in Falmouth. But if that's not the case, and we're not an estimated habitat, I guess I'm confused as to why our clients should have a time of year restriction when other projects, including Askapeskit and apparently Falmouth Yacht Club don't have it, if we, like these Hello. other properties, are not an estimated habitat. That's a question, Mr. Chair. And I can answer that question, Glenn, sure. and as I explained to you, after Acapescat Beach was issued, okay. we discovered the plovers over at 24 Willis, which is directly across the, uh, the channel from the Acapescat Beach Association. That oh. is why we're, we're imposing that. There is a colony of lease terns, and there are piping plovers have established territory over there as well. 
They've okay. been there all last year. We monitored them. And for your information, we did require the Acapesca Beach Association to engage with the plover monitor prior to beach nourishment spoils being placed on that beach. So Acapesca Beach Association did engage with Mass uh, Audubon last year and okay. to uh, monitor for the plovers to make sure they weren't present during the beach nourishment. We are not singling your client out. We are not singling you out. This is because we, we were working on a house construction over at 24 Willis that had been vacant for, mm -hmm. I'd say over five years and the board, birds established some territory over there. They're okay. right I'm not aware the of that. And that yeah. wasn't part of our discussion. So that's good to know. I wasn't aware of the plover habitat nor the escape. Yeah, and, and natural here. heritage is now aware that they are there. So okay. I'm anticipating the, the, that polygon to change. Okay, our goal obviously is to attempt to try on an annual basis as we talk, Jen, to try to do it before the April one to, to uh -huh. not deal with it anyways. I have one final point. Um, in a paragraph, and, and I know that staff has a report and they suggested adding the word nourishment into section 10, which is fine with us. And also the word cobble into special condition 14. We're fine with that as well. I would just point out, looking again at the language, uh, in paragraph 10 of the special condition, the time of year restriction, it is basically a flat prohibition within a beach nourishment, including staging, grading, and equipment access, even adding the word nourishment. Um, but then in, in 12, it spells out the beach nourishment can occur within that time of year restriction. Uh, we would just suggest to maybe clean it up slightly that we just add the words in, in special condition 10 that just says, unless as allowed per special condition uh, 12, which I think would just make those two conditions read cleanly. Well, what happened, Glenn, is I sent you over this language and it was bulleted out a little bit differently yeah. than you renumbered it. So okay. when you renumbered it, that's where it got a little confusing. If you look okay. at the way it's it's presented, because what I did is I cut and I pasted the language that Natural Heritage sends us right out of that. But, and the example I sent you was the comp dredge permit for the town. Okay. So yeah, that yeah. kind of bullets it out A, B, and C. So I think renumbering it kind of maybe you lost that. But you maybe. can nourish the beaches during plover season if you have a qualified shorebird monitor on site i think it's 24 or 48 don't quote me hours beforehand Alyssa, you know this better than i do you were a monitor and that they have to be present to make sure there's no bird right. activity and if it's all clear it's all clear just like it yeah, happened yeah. acapesca got nourished last year with mass audubon providing the monitoring to them that's great. We just wanted to make sure yep. uh, that, that they were consistent. So thanks, Jen. I mean, we're, we, we, we do appreciate, I mean, I will say to Jen's credit, she was very helpful in the settlement as well as playing a part in working out the language of DEP council and, and to settle the abutters appeal. So we do thank her for that effort. Just to clarify for the board, um, there are some differences between the, the amend, uh, the, order you issued and this amendment one is the 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 volume of sand um i think originally glenn it was 100 or the board blood 100 they are requesting 300 per year um correct, correct. yeah that's um, that's two what the was the the oh. our um order had some pretty strong language on how the survey was to be conducted it was supposed to be an instrument survey um um done they are proposing and um the um what's it, what's it called stand the embry method and or possibly drone um surveys the town is currently doing their beach profiling by by drone so staff was in agreement to that and then we're i think just some of the language was cleaned up, reworded by DEP. I'm fine with that language. And then we added the plover language specifically because the plovers were discovered within the past year, year and a half over on 24 Willis. 
I think that sums it up. Yeah, correct. I'm uh, very happy to get to this point. Stan, do you have anything to add at this point? Am I unmuted? No, um, Jen had it right. It's a modified Emory method. Yeah. Mr. Daniels, do you have anything to add at this point? All right. Mr. Johnson, do you have anything to add at this point? No, Mr. Chairman. All right. Um, Jen, did you have anything additional? No, um, only that, Glenn, if you want the language to flow a little bit better, I'll, I'll reformat it like Natural Heritage had it instead of your numbers. I'll just sure. bullet it out. Um, yeah, we're on the okay. same page. Yeah. You know, okay. I just thank you very much. Not a problem. Alyssa. I have nothing to add. Thank you. All right. Um, I just have a question. That it's going from 100 cubic yards a year to 300. You're okay with that, Jen? Um, I'm I'm fine with that, Mr. Chairman. And it's a big area, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, Betsy. Are you asking if I have questions, or do you want me to give you a motion? No, I'm asking if you have any comments or questions. We're not at no comments. Yet. But I'm ready with a motion. Uh, I'm sure you are. <laughs> Courtney. No questions. Kevin. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Steve. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Right. Thank you. Jen, is there anything in the public chat function, please? Nothing in the public chat, Mr. Chairman. All right. Then Anybody I'm going to make them. Like, Anybody have anything they'd like to add? Smart. All right, Betsy, go ahead. I'm making a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Bird second. All right. Alyssa, did I see your hand go up? No. It was, but that's okay. No. I uh, just wanted to add to the record that one other request by the applicant's representatives is that this permit will be valid for five years, not our usual three. Uh, okay. That's consistent with the final order, Mr. Chair, issued by DEP. I think you're wise. I'm fine with that, Mr. Chairman. I better be. It's a mess. Oops, sorry. You know it's a late night. All right, we have a motion and a second to close the hearing. If there's nothing further, we're voting. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. <clears throat> Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. Patton, aye. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time, everyone. Right. Thank you. Good night. All right, gentlemen. Right. Next up, request for a certificate of compliance. Barry Peter and Eileen O'Connell, 286 Edgewater Drive East, East Falmouth, Mass. Request for a certificate of compliance for Mass DEP number 25 3842. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I am promoting Mr. Beater up. If you all remember, actually, I think, Melissa, can you recap this? This was a request for a certificate of compliance. Um, and yes. when we went out there to uh, conduct our compliance review, the staff felt that certain areas weren't planted in accordance with the planting plan. And so the applicant has requested a hearing before you. Um, we briefly, um, we briefed the board at the last hearing. I can't remember even when that was a couple of weeks ago. You were all to go out to the hearing, which is 286 Edgewater Drive East. East. 
hope you all made it out there and we're here to see what the board would like to do. Thank you, Alyssa. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, Mr. Peter, do you have anything you'd like to add at this point? Um, only that, um, thank you for coming out and uh, viewing the property. And I'd like to uh, uh, to expedite our plantings uh, in the spring, uh, um, if it would be possible to uh, get permission to uh, have the staff perhaps provide some notation or emails that will clarify the planting areas, if that will expedite um, the process. What do you mean, right, so Mr. Peter? I think well, we I need think to collectively. We... I'm sorry, go ahead. I think we need to hear what everybody saw when they went on site. Okay. Um, but I have a, a, a procedural question, Jen. Um, you're, you're asking us to vote on certificate of compliance. No? Correct. Yes, we're here for a it's the request for a certificate of compliance. So if the board felt that if you felt that the property was in compliance, then you can instruct the staff to issue compliance. If but it wouldn't felt, be in compliance until those plants are put in, correct? That's what the staff was saying. There are additional plants that need to be put in. So once those once those are put in, then we can do a second request for a uh, certificate of compliance. Compliance, excuse me. So even if we agree on the, the, the change of geography, we, we would still need to continue this? Correct, until the plants are installed. Okay, but but we're looking to give the homeowner the, the consensus of that we would allow okay. it to go in the other area. Okay, so I don't know um, if everybody remembers this um, and went out there and saw the, the alternate planting areas. So I'm gonna open up the comments, hopefully. Everybody remembers this, Courtney. I have no comments. Okay. Kevin. No comments, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I'll just say I went out there. I'm, I'm okay with the alternate location. I mean, makes perfect sense. Steve. I agree with you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Betsy. I also agree with you. Okay. Which alternate, if the board could clarify, which alternate location are you speaking of? Over by where the kayak area was. Got it. Okay. Yep. We know which area that is. Well, I mean, I understood that's what you were asking us. If, if, if they could change it from by the shed where it wasn't successful to the other side. Both were required. Yes. Staff was stating that the area by the shed has historically um, been difficult for the plants to grow in. So it would make sense if plants were not reestablished in that area, but solely in the other required area, which was right. by, okay. So they weren't alternates. They were just which required okay. areas are still required. Choice of word. <laughs> no worries. Uh, um, and that's all I'm saying is that, you know, I'm fine with that being there. So Mr. Beater, it, 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 we're going to vote on this, but thing is that, location over by the kayak rack can be increased to accept what didn't work over by the shed. Correct. That's my, once, uh, sorry. That's uh, our understanding as well. Yeah. Okay. Just so we're all on the same page, but again, procedurally, it means that, um, and Jen, you can correct me if I'm wrong. We're basically going to vote that change is fine. But it doesn't actually issue an order a, a certificate of compliance. Correct. Yet. Yet. Correct. We, we need a continuance of this hearing. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I just want to be clear because the the the, the agenda says we're we're voting on a certificate of compliance, but we're not. But we are it is it's still a positive move. That's what I want to emphasize that it's it's allowing the applicant to move forward with this so we can get a certificate of compliance. Correct. And we'll work with you, Mr. Beater, on the appropriate plants, because I can tell you the, the blueberry that you tried to plant near the shed is not going to survive over by where that marsh is and where that those bockerets is. So you we'll work with you on the appropriate plants and the number of plants to install, okay? Beautiful. That's great. Thank okay. you. So, so we're basically going to continue this until 
the plantings are done and then then a, really we don't uh -huh. it, it can kick it back to Alyssa. Yeah. Yeah, and then so, we'll come and say everything was done and then we'll close the hearing and we'll issue compliance. Right. Okay. Okay. So we are going to be looking for a continuance for tonight's purposes. I think that's the cleanest way to do this, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right. Is everybody clear on that? Yeah. So we're going to kick this continuance out until the plants are in been planted? Yes, Mr. Peter, how, many, how much time do you need? I mean, it's not great planting weather right now, but if we kicked it out to like the end of May, our last hearing in May is May 24th, would that in, in that April, That's, May time frame give you enough time to put some plants in? Absolutely. Okay. Why don't we do that? Why don't we continue this to May 24th? You'll work with Alyssa and I. We've already, we the boards identified that area that they want um, filled in. We'll, um, you know, not require the, the area of low bush blueberry by the shed. And then we'll work with you on the plants. You get them installed. We'll go out and check. And then on the May 24th hearing, we can report to the board that we're hopefully happy with that. And then they can instruct us to issue compliance. Sounds great. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Right. So. Come on, Betsy. So at the request of the applicant, I'll make a motion to continue this till May 24th. Third, second. I'm with you, Jamie. Yeah. All right. We have a motion and a second to continue this till 524, Betsy. A glad felt her eye. Courtney. Bird eye. Matthews eye. Kevin. O'Brien eye. Steve. Aye. Excellent. It's unanimous. We've continued this till 524. Thank you, Mr. Veter. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Good night. All right. Next up, our vote orders of conditions. And getting there, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Courtney, you're not on any of these, so no, I mean, like to... oh dear. <laughs> yeah. So I can adjourn. Slacker. Yep. <laughs> All right. You ready, Jen? Yeah, give me one second, Mr. Chairman. I'm just trying to move some papers around. Yeah, and yeah find there you my go. papers over here. Ooh, shut off. Um, you can start, Mr. Chairman. All right. First up, Martin Walsh. 71 Bay Road, Falmouth, Mass. Um, 171 Bay this. Road. And this was to construct a second story, add an addition, add a retaining wall. We think we're redoing some patio area um, as mitigation and it's a Tom Bunker oh, project. Lisa, what do we have about those seedings yes. over there? Um, just that we were hopeful they could be spread out a bit more. Thank you. Yeah, I knew that was going to say. That. Yeah, and to, they're planting a little grove of cedars that we would like spread out a little bit more. Oh yeah, special condition: spread cedar, stop cutting. <laughs> there you go. So I think oh, that's Lord. it. Unless the board wants anything. Uh, else? Anybody want to see anything else in there? Thank you. No, thank you. All right. I'll make a motion to issue an order of conditions as discussed. Steve or second. Kevin, you have to, yeah. Yeah. All right, we have a motion and a second to issue an order of conditions as discussed. There's nothing further. All right, Betsy. Well, I felt her eye. Matthews, I. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous with this quorum. 
We have issued an order of conditions. Next up, Kevin Delbridge, K. Delbridge Associates, LLC, 192 Second Asset Road, Falmouth, Mass. Um, this is that very large scale plan, uh, restoration, um, invasive species removal restoration plan, but the board also has to understand it is part of an enforcement order. So um, this was an enforcement matter. Um, the staff does have concerns about the amount of shrubby St. John's board that is going on that site. Um, I mean, we can reduce it and, and, and require it to be planted in a lower quantity and, and add um, like well, bayberry to it. But I, I have a question, Jen. Sure. That area is where big cedar trees were cut, correct? Yes. So obviously, at one time, small cedar trees established and were able to grow into those harsh conditions, correct? It would appear, yes. So I definitely think the St. John's Ward should be cut down and there should be some cedar trees planted there. Small cedar trees. Just to clarify, Betsy, I'm not sure if they were cedars exactly, but there were trees there. Okay. Well, I mean, I know there were there cedar were, would be the most likely to cedar. survive in an area like that. So we can add a few more. I mean, they add, they did account, as Alyssa clarified at the last hearing, they did account for the trees that were removed. Jeff Johnson went through all of the aerials um, and what was it, Alyssa, he identified 13 trees that were removed, something like that. And yeah. that tree count, that tree replacement has been incorporated on the site, just not in that location. Um, well, I think there should be some trees there. They should be small, start out as small trees. Okay. It is a harsh site. Yeah. And if we cut the hypericum in that area by the pool, she has it there, she has it wrapping around the edges of the, uh, I don't have her yellow plan, so I've got to line a look at this and the lighting in this room is not great. Um, so, from what I can tell, it's mostly in the restoration area as opposed to the invasive species removal areas. Yeah, I remember, I mean, because that came up with what's required and what isn't required on that lot. But mm -hmm. as I remember, that was right. put in the area that was the restoration area. Correct. So what would you like to see? You want to see one third of it and then remove two thirds of the hypericum and plant something else. Yes. And then incorporate how, how many little cedars do you want in that area? I would say a cluster of eight. Okay. I would prefer them to be, I think, clustered as opposed to just one. Exactly. One, one. I yep. just don't think they're gonna do well there. If you start yeah. just scattering them, they're just, they're going to get. No, I think they'd there. be better. They're nice to see a nice cluster. Okay. And in that restoration area. Yes. And reduce. Care from by two thirds. Okay. Other than that, I mean, the, the project team did a tremendous amount of work on the site. It, it, Actually, it, it was shocking. It was shocking to see all the um, 
what do you call the invasive tree? The uh, oh, locust. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's it was really pretty good. So anyway, okay. Eye opening. <laughs> yes. All right, got it. I don't know why everybody hates locusts. Well, because it's an invasive plant. Down in Burning, it's great firewood. It is great. It is great firewood. You're right. Good furniture wood. Mm. All right. Anything else? All right. So I'll Go. make a motion to to issue this order of conditions as discussed. Glad filter. Pat and second. Thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second to issue an order of conditions as discussed. Anything else? All right, Betsy. Glad filter I. Matthews I. Kevin. O'Brien I. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous with this quorum. We have issued an order of conditions. All right, next up, and I believe we're going to vote this as one because it's it has been discussed as one all along, but I'll read them both. Lucius and Wendy Hill, 0 Nashuina Street, happen parcel numbers 24-20-001-000 and 24-20-001-001. Falmouth Mass. Was that both? Chairman, this is just yes. the um, invasive species removal and restoration project. Uh, we had some questions and concerns when out there, and met, I think Alyssa met with Teresa. Um, and there was slight modifications made to the plan. And I don't believe we have any more concerns. It no, looks good. Clarity. It came back. Yeah. They already received permission to apply from the board of select. And so now that if, if we issue an order of conditions, they'll go back for permission to actually work. Correct. That's they'll go back for a list. license agreement. Okay. All right. Anything anybody want to see in there? All right. I'll make a motion to issue an order of conditions as discussed. That and second. All right. We have a motion and a second to issue an order of conditions as discussed. If there's nothing further. All right, Betsy. Glad filter I. Matthews I. Kevin. O'Brien I. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. Thank you, everyone. That is all she wrote. That was enough. Thank you, guys. Well done, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, you I make know. a motion to adjourn. I think Courtney yeah. just made the motion. Yeah, we second, need your second. I didn't hear him. You'll have oh, to speak yeah. up. I, I make a motion second. to adjourn. Black filter I. Bird I. Matthews I. O'Brien I. And Patton I. Thank you all. It, it is an it is anonymous. It is unanimous. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.